Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to episode 21 of the Shard Shooters Podcast. I am your humble and gracious host, Mr. Brinsky Sharp. Be sharp on the ones and twos, the threes and fours and the fives and the six. Oh man, we got a pack house tonight. Got all my player partners in here. So, and we have two guests. So you already know what kind of night that's about to be. So it's about to be a lot of S talking. I ain't trying to say the word, but y'all already know. So appreciate everybody uh, subscribing to the channel. Keep liking and commenting and keep showing your love. But without further ado, look at the players right there. The lawyer, he's still at work. Oh, the man. The man was Mr. Cream Soup. No, tan suit last week. Now, boy, got the got the vest on, boy. The collar shirt. <laughs> Mr. Arlen, my dog. What's happening? And Mr. First Person Shooter, Mr. DJ himself. We we gonna be uh getting rich. I forgot. Damn, that used to be my song, man. By you, what was that? By twenty twenty thousand. I can't remember what song was that. Twenty thousand. Yep. It's twenty twenty. Yep, man. We we ain't that rich, but we we got some money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My yeah, main yeah. man, the Haven. But ladies and gentlemen, we have two special guests in the house, and I oh shout out Skiggy. But one of the first guests, I just want to bring him up here, my player partner, my player partner, straight out of Tuskegee, Alabama, ladies and gentlemen, straight out of Tuskegee, Mr. Tailgate Kings himself, my OG, my dog, Tess, what's going on, pimp? What's going on, fellas? What's going what's going on, 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 brother? <laughs> See you, oh, Skiggy. Oh, skiggy. yeah, man. You got post Skiggy guys <laughs> up here, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, man, it's always good when you got Skiggy up here. Pleasure to be here. Oh, yeah, man. Appreciate, Appreciate you being you. on the show. And, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, he's a R fan. So, yeah. Where are you? <laughs> Roll tight. It ain't all good. Yeah. Where are you? <laughs> but. We got one more special guest in the house, and my main man, Arlon, going to introduce him. Yes, sir. Okay, the special guest, great friend of mine, um, comes highly decorated. 10-plus year percussionist, 10-plus year pianist, collegiate baseball player, Mm. uh, currently a school football coach, coaching DBs and wideouts, school baseball coach, and even a youth pastor, my man, Joshua Dennis. Ooh. Yo, how y'all doing? Hey, man. wide receiver <laughs> and DB? Hey, hey, man, yeah. you the man right yeah. there. Yeah, it's just middle school, no big. Yeah, hey, 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 man. No, don't, don't, don't <laughs> say yourself, awesome. dog. Don't, 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 don't demean your talents, brother. Man, what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, appreciate yeah, it, appreciate it. Yes, sir. And shoot, man. If you need any type of designs or anything like that. My main man, Tez, can do it all, take pictures. Great photographer, ladies and gentlemen. So I, I'm i sorry. I'm so, oh no, let me make sure y'all get that too. Make sure, make sure y'all get that too. Hit them up right there. Oh, uh, that is. Right there. I'm afraid of amateur right there. Pub, pub. That's, that's what I'm talking about. He know how to pub himself, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I don't know what these guys are doing. They ain't pubbing themselves, and I don't like it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, we got a uh, busy show tonight. But we're going to start with the NFL Division Playoffs Ooh. recap. And, man, did we have some games this weekend? Did we have some games this weekend? Boy, Only fun. game I really want to sp- – well, just for me, we, we definitely can talk about whatever. But they was somebody on the show. Oh, wait, where you going, oh. brother? Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, he's running. I don't like that, man. Come on, man. I say this just for you. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Mr. Houston Kessens fan himself. 
Oh man, he was, ladies and gentlemen, this man last week was talking so much. Oh, we're going to run through the Ravens and all that good stuff. <laughs> and I was like, hmm, I'm just going to go ahead and screenshot this and just remember that because I know what's going to happen. But, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lamar Action Jackson showed out on them calves called the Texans. <laughs> But man, it's it's been a great game, man. The defense was uh fly. they played lights out. Roquan Smith was just playing out of his mind that <laughs> whole game. And uh it's gonna be a uh, very, very interesting uh AFC championship game. What were some of y'all favorite games and takeaways from this weekend? Uh yeah, man, you said that, that name, Roquan Smith, man. You know, they hit hard. UGA fan, die hard right here. So, of course, we got a little friction with Alabama. Well, actually, a lot of friction. But, uh, I understand. Nah, but nah. Yeah, man, but that Ravens defense, I've been telling people, bro, it is serious. Uh, one of our uh, teachers, he's a JLC instructor at a school I teach at. He's a huge Baltimore Ravens fan. And I asked him another day on Facebook, I said, Coach, how, how, what do you, where do you rank this defense in y'all's history? He said, it's the best we've ever had. I'm like, it can't be better than the 2000 Ravens. <laughs> he was like, it's better than the 2000 Ravens because overall, because all they had, well, not all they had, but he was just saying Ray Lewis was really just the main guy with that defense and everybody else just came under him. I'm like, bro, I don't, call. I don't know, man. Like, I mean, you talking, I mean, they had Ed Reed later on, but I mean, that 2000 Ravens defense was, I mean, absolutely shut down. I don't I, – this defense is really good. I like Javion Clowney on the line. I like Roquan. I like uh, Patrick Queen. I like um, uh, Marlon Humphrey, you know what I'm saying, at DB. And uh, I like uh, Hamilton, Kyle Hamilton at safety and all that kind of stuff. But uh, that the physicality of that 2000s defense was just un, unheard of. And so it's like, I don't know, man. But I, I say I had to say, though, that I think the Chiefs are going to struggle. This upcoming season, this upcoming um, sat, this upcoming Sunday uh, in the AFC Championship, the Texans, as good as CJ Stroud is, they only scored three points. The offense only scored three points. Dog on it. I mean, they they lit up the Browns defense, but against this Ravens defense, they only scored three measly points. The other seven points came from a punt return. And so it's just like, man, I, I just, I don't know. And they didn't have Tank Dell. You know, they, they was missing a couple other pieces on offense. But, I mean, that that's just how good it's, that the defense is. So, Lamar Jackson, he didn't have to necessarily do too much. He threw for 152 yards. That's nothing. I mean, he still accounted for a lot of yards and accounted for just the offense in general, big offensive production in the second half from the Ravens. But, I mean, you know what I'm saying? They, he didn't have to overwhelm himself by trying to come back because the defense was playing high. No, that that defense is so good. He's most of the time playing with the lead. And so, I mean, I I, I see them, you know, pretty much handling the Chiefs up coming Sunday, you know, winning by at least 10. I mean, Patrick going to do what he can do. 1-5 is is phenomenal. He's special. But that defense, I think, will be a little bit too much. Anybody want to follow that? Just go for it. Matter of fact, Mr. Tesla, right. tell us. Oh, go ahead, T. Go ahead. Oh, no, you can go ahead. You was talking about the Texans. I was about to say, my, my favorite game, you know, yeah, oh, yeah, Niners yeah. fan. Oh, yeah, I, we'll I, get I it love, out. Let's, yeah, let's just go yeah. ahead and get Mr. Texans out the way. Yeah, talk, talk, yeah. talk good about no, it. Number Jesus. one, first and foremost, let me speak on my squad. Hey, good season this year. H-Town did the unthinkable to make it this far. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I did. I did talk my crap last week. You know what I'm saying? I said it was going to be an easy win for my team and everything like that. Uh, thought we was going to be able to get it in the end zone. Um, you know, Shroud put up 175 yards through the air. Just nothing could really click for us. Really good game in the first half. Really good game in the first half. But I knew coming into that second half, man, whoever was going to come out bombing, Hey, man, was going to win the game. And uh, Baltimore cut it up on us, man. They didn't stop. They kept it running. And it was just like, shh. Hey, you know, can't say nothing bad about Lamar on this one. He did what he had to do. He came out, man, showed up and showed out. That first half, defense was on him, you know, getting sacks and everything, stopping that offense. But, man, that second half, 
uh, like he said, it was a whole lot of cussing in that locker room uh, during during that halftime break. So he did what he was supposed to do, man. Big shout out to Baltimore. Big shout out to Lamar getting his second playoff win. Uh, you know, hey, it was a, it was a it was a good game, man. Until that second half, uh, I, I I feel like my squad got a good bright future ahead of them this off season. I already see. Uh, I'm hearing things. I don't want to speak too much on this podcast, but they're trying to bring some heavy hitters in. Hopefully, a Mike Evans and a, a Derrick Henry will mm-hmm. solve our issues for next year. We'll see. Mm-hmm. We got the money for it, and uh, we got the draft pick. So, hey, shout out to A. Sean again. Good season. Just couldn't pull it off against the number one team in the NFL, man. Mm. Oh, anybody can go, man. Y'all just flow. That would be sick. And Derrick Henry came to right, H-Town, yeah, to Houston with C.J. Stroud. Mm-hmm. That would be crazy, bro. Derrick Henry and Mike Evans. If we got mm-hmm. Mike Evans, it's going to be a tough, tough road. And Mike is from the Houston area. He, he actually wow. played football in Galveston. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it would be you crazy. Know, um, home. Going, going, going off, going off, um, before I, before I dive in, going on what you just said, Dehaven, I think a more real, I think uh, after those emails or whatever, the text messages kind of leaked with C.D. Lamb and I think it was his mom or whatever, y'all might be looking at getting another receiver. Maybe you get saying, C.D. But- in there, have a big number one. I don't know about Mike because I think Mike may want to stay where he's at, but mm-hmm. I don't know. But I'm hearing, a, my, I'm my, hearing AJ Brown too. Oh, that'll be a good one. Cap. Yeah. That'll be a good one. I mean, y'all got, y'all um, got, the swags. Y'all got a, a lot of receivers want to go play with this new young cat, man. So a lot for of me, receivers want to go play with him. For me, the game, <clears throat> the big game that I was uh, waiting for was the Bills and Chiefs and the Packers versus the uh 49ers. Um when it comes to the Houston Texans and the Ravens, I didn't expect the Texans to hang around. And the, the reason because the, I think CJ's great. I think their defense is good. I think they're young and they're emerging. But they just had too many injuries on offense. And playing the Baltimore defense, who, just to shoot Jocelyn Bale, was top in, you know, yards per game allowed, sacks and defensive scores, which has never been done. Top in defensive scores and uh, sacks um, is the first time this ever happened. So them going against a team like that with injured receivers and they're missing some of their deep threats and some of their speedsters, I, I didn't see them being able to stay with Baltimore offensively. And that ended up being the case the second half. Um, but the Green Bay Packers game was a game I was really looking forward towards because I think Brock Purdy may be slightly overrated. Mm-hmm. And um, the weather was forecast for rain. And I just know he always has <laughs> trouble with those little dinosaur hands holding <laughs> and gripping the football when the when the ball is wet. You can see, you can literally see pictures of him wiping his hand during the play trying to throw the football. And um, the Green Bay Packers, man, no one really talked about it, but they have a really good defense. They have a really good defense, and Matt LaFleur is a great offensive play caller. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing about uh, Jordan Love, he's young, and he makes stupid mistakes. Mm-hmm. And he threw, the, he threw the game away at the end, and Brock Purdy did have a game-winning drive. So that was one game I was looking forward to. The other one was the Chiefs versus the Bills. Um, the Bills do a lot of talking. They want the Chiefs. They said, hey, we never had a home game in the playoffs. We have a home game this time. And, you know, they, they played Mahomes. And for some reason, they they always fail to realize that when it comes to these tight games, you have to be as error-free as possible. And it's too many risky plays near the end. And they eventually lose their chance to win. You know, they they missed the opportunity to win the game. So those are my uh, that was my recap of the weekend. So 
saw some good, like I said, a lot of good football games, and pretty much everybody who I expected to win, win actually won. I ain't gonna lie, man. That 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 Green Bay game was crazy, man. The way he uh, he mm-hmm. threw that last that last pick, bro, because he actually had a receiver on the out that was wide open mm-hmm. and still decided to throw it into triple coverage. It was insane to me. Like, yeah, you want to talk about a script? <clears throat> I mean, dude. Nah. It, it 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 that was the craziest thing I saw all all playoffs was that so far him throwing in the triple coverage and the game is on the line and you got your out receiver wide open go back and look I watched it like seven times in a row mm-hmm. I just couldn't believe you made that throw man it, it was insane bro it was insane man that was just a, a total mental lapse bro you know, I tell you what man go ahead. Get you a game manager. I have no mm. idea why game manager is all of a sudden a bad thing, right? Game managers do not do what Jordan Love did in that game. Mm. They don't. They don't throw in the double coverage. They throw it to the open receiver. It was triple, triple. Coverage. They don't throw it in the triple coverage. <laughs> mm. When it came down to it, you go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. My fault. No, I'm saying that game, when it came down to it, Brock Purdy made the plays at the end of that game, every play he needed to make. Mm-hmm. And when you mm-hmm. put the game in the hand of a game changer, you see what happens. I've, I've said this before. Game changers, they don't win Super Bowls because they usually make mistakes because they can't manage games. Mm-hmm. If you look at the Super Bowl list, it's usually you'll see a bunch of game managers. If you look at the mm-hmm. MVP list, you see a bunch of game changers. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I, 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 I highly disagree with that. Yeah. Man, I highly disagree with that. So you consider, I don't know, you consider Tom Brady a game manager? Oh, yeah. I can I consider. He was at first. I, I can yeah, We can say I consider, game manager is a bad Brady. term. Troy Aikman yeah, was. I don't think they're bad. Troy Aikman was definitely not no game man. He was a game manager. Yes, he was. At first, first, he was. We can say at first for a lot of guys. <laughs> Joe <laughs> Montana was a game manager. Bro, Joe I consider, Montana. I consider hey, Tom nah, Brady the nah, greatest nah. game manager of all time. You know what? Who? I think he said Tom, Tom Brady is the greatest said, game manager of all time. But he's such a great that, game that, manager. That, 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 that is crazy, bro. Here's, that, here's, the, here's the thing. I think as a quarterback, you need the ability to do both. You need the ability to bring change when you need to, but also manage the game. Like you don't always have to take over the game. As some sometimes you have to you have to play not to lose. And sometimes you have to play to win. You know, there's there's two distinct different versions of it. Sometimes you get to play heroic, sometimes you get to play sidekick. You, what was Tom Brady's to, greatest skill set as a quarterback? What would to you do say both. is greatest? To do both. To do both. Tom I, Brady I, went out there and won games. But at times, he, he went out there and never lost games. Like, there's a He's talent, accurate. There's a, there's he's a accurate. I would say both. accuracy. Yeah, accuracy. Accuracy right. was his greatest asset. But uh, to, he was not the t- most talented quarterback of all time, most no. definitely. He, 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 wrote, he wrote on the back of Bill Belichick in that defense for his first three Super Bowls and Adam Vinatieri because he just game managed. But then as he got older, the second half of his uh, Patriot career, he became a game changer. And, you know, that's you, how you don't up, You don't game – game managers don't win Super Bowl MVPs. They just don't <laughs> – Yes, and he did. has well, two he, of those three. Should, I don't know, man. Nick he Foles shouldn't have got, got it. He shouldn't have got it early on. His right. Nick, Nick Foles, Foles is the reason. One. Nick Foles was one of the main reasons why they have their only Super Bowl. It wasn't because but, of their defense, right? He's still a game manager, though. He just but yeah, but I'm saying, game. but okay, okay. Name another game manager. Let's not let's not start this. Don't be picking up your gold. I mean, coach go. it now. I mean, no, I mean, no, no. Trent Dilfer. Okay. Trent Dilfer. Trent Dilfer. Trent Dilfer. Trent Dilfer. That's a game manager. Game manager. Right. Game manager. So we what about Black 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 name a game manager. No, but I'm saying, I'm saying name a game manager that 
game manager that wins Super Bowl MVP. Trent Dilfer doesn't have a Super Bowl MVP. No, it's true. No, no, that's no, true. No, 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 no. He doesn't have a league MVP. I don't know league MVPs that have that are game managers. That I, that's exactly my point. Game changers are MVPs. So game Tom Brady is Super a Bowl. game changer, right? Later in his he's, career, yeah. He's not he's at such first. a great. This is what I'm saying. He's such I a said great Joe game Blacko. That he nah, changed Joe Blacko was no game manager. He's an MVP, bro. Super Bowl Who? MVP. Who hit the check down game, more man. than Tom Brady? Say that again. Y'all don't want to talk about Who, Joe on this podcast. Who hits the check okay. down more than Tom Brady and Peyton Nobody. Manning? Nobody. 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 But you, but people criticize Brock Purdy for doing the exact same thing and call but him a Brock, game manager. Yeah, they can they can say that about Brock Purdy all they want, but Brock Purdy has is start is proving more and more that he is not that. He's a game changer. I what I consider. No, no. A game I want to say no. Nah, listen, in my opinion. Oh, I put it like this. I put it like this. If give you, me the quarterback, that's not going to put the ball in harm's way. Yeah, I'm, I'm just. I say just put it like this. When you say game manager, I think of Trent Dilfer. I think of Joe uh, Black. Uh, Joe Dak is not that. That. <laughs> I need, I need game changer Joe Flacco will lead the league. Geno, Geno Smith, uh, Tino Smith. Okay. Like Not those man. type, like I those think, type. I, of I think of Dak Prescott. I think he's a game manager. Yeah. He's, he's not a, a big risk taker. He's not a big risk taker. He's not Dak, a big risk. Dak is definitely yeah, but, not. But, but he throws the ball to the other team a lot. Well, well, that yeah, means that does. that's one thing. Being a game manager and being a, a bad quarterback, you could be both. <laughs> <laughs> you could be both. And he's not a bad quarterback. He just there's a part of the game he just hasn't mastered yet. Going through his progressions fast enough, he just doesn't do that. But well, that's because at Mississippi State he wasn't even a throwing quarterback. He was a running yeah, quarterback. He was like a Tim Tebow. Yeah. He had to really develop throwing the ball when he got to the NFL. Okay. That's what it was. Well, he's still literally trying to learn that. Well, regardless, Tom Brady ain't no game man. That's all I'm gonna say. And at I first that first flag first. right there, and I plant that flag right there. At first State it is is no way you can call the goat, even if you want to say first half. You, I give you the first season of his, uh, when, uh, not the first season, uh, the second season first. when they won the suit when they won the I Super Bowl. I give you that. He, he maybe a little look. bit of the, may, maybe a little bit of the second, but if you literally look at every Super Bowl, who ball the ball is in his hand, he has to go win it. <laughs> he was he was, yeah. he was given the so he, he was given the Seahawks in the Falcons Super Bowl, so I almost don't count. That's true. I don't he, he didn't get what? that. He had to win. He had to yeah. win that. He had to win no, that. They the, were down the, 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 All the Falcons and Seahawks had to do was run the ball, and that there's not even no question about no six rings, whatever, for no Tom Brady. Well, hell, if the my Falcons and Seahawks a, lost those Super Bowls, well, if my aunt had a pen, well, if my aunt had a penis, she'd be my uncle. But that ain't the case. <laughs> <laughs> but that ain't facts. Tom Tom Brady literally brought them back. From those Super Bowls, he was down ten in the Seahawks uh, Super Bowl, and of course, the famous <laughs> was it was 25? twenty five? Twenty, bro. That, 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 that is one Super Bowl I am so glad I watched from crazy. start to bro. finish. I didn't miss one second of that Super Bowl. <laughs> They had some money on that one. Kyle Shanahan had some money on that one. Uh, yeah, I don't want to bring that up, man, because yeah, we got Kyle yeah. Shanahan, and you this is not even talking about that game. Yeah. Hey man, Kyle may make it up, man. But that brings it. Bring that's a great said way to this AFC and NFC championship predictions. It's just this little simple. I just a little simple, simple. You can give a little explanation if you want to, but just some simple, simple. You already know we got the Ravens and the Chiefs. Well, Chiefs Ravens. Because Chiefs going to uh, Baltimore. And then we got the night game, the Lions and the 49ers. I feel like anybody can win this Super Bowl. Literally anybody can win this Super Bowl. It's like all gloves off, man. This is like I, I'm loving both matchups. So I'm just going to um, – I'm trying to see how I want to do this. Do I want to ask y'all? Matter of fact, everybody say who – 
I'm just gonna say I'm gonna go down the list. Uh, who y'all think gonna win? And then we'll just explain. Then we can move on. Well, Arlon, we'll start with you. Chiefs, Ravens. Okay, I have the Ravens winning. <clears throat> Um, not by much, just because I think the Chiefs. We're gonna explain it in a minute, man. Oh, okay. You say we go. Yeah, yeah, we do. Got, yeah, we're gonna. I have, the yeah. Raven, I have the Ravens being the Chiefs, and I have Detroit being the 49ers. Wow, on the road. Okay, the Haven, what you mm-hmm. got for me? I got the Chiefs beating the Ravens, and I have Detroit beating the 49ers. Oh, another one. Okay, okay. Josh, what you got for me, player? Yeah, man. So I got the um, I got the Ravens beating the Chiefs, and I have the 49ers beating the Lions. Okay, T. Uh, I got the Chiefs beating the Ravens, and uh, of course, I got the Niners beating the. Uh, oh, whoa! What a surprise, ladies and gentlemen! Forty <laughs> ers fan saying that his team is going to the Super Bowl. What a hey, surprise! This game scares me, though. This game scares me. <laughs> I, I, hey, I like the Lions. <laughs> yeah, for real. I like well, the coach. Uh, yeah, it's a couple reasons. We can get into it, but oh yeah, we about to get into it. Now yeah. I'm about to say, for me, I'm, I'm I've been saying he was the MVP for the longest. It's on record, hey, but it was some doubters on this show. I ain't gonna say no names, and one of them ain't on the show. Shout out to Quint, man. See you next week. <laughs> But uh, I got the Ravens, and then I got uh, – man, this this one is so good. I, I'm glad they made that one the uh, night game. You know what? Mm-hmm. They're going to shock the world, man. Detroit. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Basketball. <laughs> but, but sure, man. What's your, what's your thoughts on these games, man? Because I believe uh, – a big part for the Ravens that they getting back um Mark Andrews and who's somebody else supposed to be coming back? Mark Andrews and uh Marlon Humphrey. Marlon Humphrey. Marlon, cause, cause Marlon was uh out last week and I thought that was gonna be like a little factor for the Ravens, but it wasn't. But it's gonna definitely help them in this game on one nine and then one of the best matchups, and I know it. It's going to be more than likely Kyle Hamilton going against uh, Travis Kelsey. So that's going to be one of the uh, best matchups of this weekend. So that's going to be definitely great to see and see how uh, Patrick Mahomes is going to do because you already know they're going to wear all black. I, now that I wish it was kind of a night game so that black can hit different at night, but they're going to wear all black. And then for the 49ers and them, oh, man. Okay, if if Debo doesn't play, that's that's gonna really really hurt uh the Forty Nine ers in a lot of ways because Detroit really has a low key weak uh secondary of all the four teams <laughs> still left in the playoff. So I know they can kind of exploit that a little bit, but they have a great pass rush, for real. But CJ. Uh, Gar Johnson having him back in that secondary helps a lot on the back end, but it's gonna be a good game, man. What's your thoughts on it? You know, I'm torn between the Ravens and the Chiefs. I really want the Ravens to win because of Lamar, um, but I kind of want the Chiefs to win because uh, I know a certain someone who said, uh, the Chiefs wouldn't be that good this year because they didn't have Eric Bieniemy. I'm not gonna say who that was, but man, no, nope. say say it correctly because their 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 offensive stats are are very very low this year. Uh, their offensive that, stats say I'm I'm in the uh uh championship uh because of game. their defense. But we can that's a whole nother story. My fault. I'm sorry for cutting you off. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay because the defense, whatever it is, if they go to the Super Bowl and win one, <laughs> hey. But anyway, 
I want the Ravens to win that game. Um, that's going to be a powerhouse game. Number one and number two defense is going against each other. Um, I'm I'm curious to see how the Ravens take away Travis Kelsey and Rasheed Rice. But, you know, uh, uh, Andy Reid has been has been scheming for these guys all playoff long. So I'm curious to see what he does. And we get to see the Chiefs in some, like, actual real good weather. I mean, not really good, but, like, normal weather. So that's going to be a good game. Detroit, Detroit's underdog for, the, for, this, for this matchup. Um, like you said, San Fran is a top five defense. Detroit's coming in as, as a mid-level defense. And um, yeah, but what I do like about Detroit, I like the coach, I like Dan Campbell. I like his guts on offense with his play calling, He's very aggressive, and they do have weapons. They have skilled players, they have athletes. This game is winnable. This game is winnable. And I, you know, shoot, I like to see Jared Goff win one. Probably not over uh, Lamar Jackson, but I like to see Jared Goff at least get there. Um, are you still going? Nah, I'm done. I, um, I look at Pat Mahomes, like, just like a Brady dog. You can't bet against him. You feel me? <laughs> you cannot bet against that man, bro. And, uh, I think Pat is going to come through, play a good game, do what he has to do to knock out the Baltimore Ravens. I also believe that the Lions have a different type of uh, team this year. I like their coach. I like their culture right now. I can actually see them coming through and disappointing San Francisco this week. Uh, I feel like they do have a, a really good defense. I don't think it's, it's mid at all. I think that defense uh been talking that talk all season. And uh, I really do see them coming through and uh, taking out San Francisco this year. I don't really believe in a Purdy like that. I don't really even want to crap on Purdy like that. But I just – I think Jared Goss a really good quarterback, man. And um, I think that they have a point to prove. I think they're going to make it to the Super Bowl this year. Also, back to uh, the Chiefs. Pincheco has been running his heart out, bro. He's, he's really been balling. I didn't like Pincheco the first half of the season, man, but he's been getting better and better and better every week. Their, uh, their offense is clicking now. Uh, their receivers are still a little iffy to me, but I think they have what it takes to uh, knock this team out, man. And shout out to Terry Bratton Jr., my classmate. Oh, shout out to Terry. Oh, yeah, definitely shout out to Terry, man. And he's definitely getting tagged on this. Should have been the Florida a and uh, head coach. I think he was well qualified for that job, but you about to oh, get a sure. bigger job out there, my brother. Yeah. So, yeah, man. Um. So, as far as the Ravens and the Chiefs, man, uh, like I said, I want, my, I want Lamar, and I say my boy. I'm a Falcon fan, but I want Lamar – to definitely um want to get him a ring. He's been heavily scrutinized in his NFL career six years. I mean, he's this if he's gonna win a second MVP and people are still saying, Oh, he can't throw, oh, he's just running back and all that kind of stuff. When he's proven year by year that he's throwing the ball better and better with more accuracy, you get him some receivers, look like look at how he's looking. And he's even more reluctant to run the ball now. He's more trying to he's trying to stand in the pocket and throw throw downs because he's continuing to prove everyone wrong and flip the narrative. And so I definitely want him to, you know, get him a ring so he don't just have the MVPs. He actually has the rings. And so, I mean, I – and now now the Chiefs defense, I will say they have improved. Um, every year, in like late in the year, they improve, and, and especially in the playoffs. And so they might give Lamar a little trouble in the first half, but I think he'll find his groove in the second half. And I, I see a 27-17 type of – uh, final score um, in this game. Um, I like, I like, I do like Pacheco and his story and, that, and everything and how hard he runs. Um, you know, I don't think Travis will give them too many issues. Um, I mean, you can put Roquan on Travis if they need to, um, or Patrick, and 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 they'll be fine. Um, and then just getting to Patrick Mahomes, like the Bills weren't putting no pressure on Patrick Mahomes, and so that's what that's what was resulting them in. 
uh, resulted in them kind of getting burned downfield because they weren't, you know, putting on, enough pressure on them. But um, so yeah, I said, like I said, I see the Ravens, um, like I said, defense dominating. Um, Lamar going to the Super Bowl, and um, you know, having Mark Andrews back is definitely big as well. Huge for the offense, especially with how Isaiah Likely is playing. You got both of your tight ends playing at a, you know, one squad playing. At, I love Mark Andrews can, you know, catch for a, 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 a buck 50 and two touchdowns in his sleep. Um, and so that's how I see it going on that. And now with the Niners and the Lions, um, you know, I, the I do like Aiden Hutchinson a lot on that D-line. I mean, he is tough. He's, I think, the next yeah. Joey Bosa. Uh, I think he's the next T.J. Watt type uh, come around, you know, especially a white defensive end. I mean, you, I mean, the guy's dominant, and so I think he's definitely going to give um, the the uh, Niners problems. I mean, they got Trent Williams, um, um, you know, and so they're gonna. I think that's going to be just a good battle, um, or they might try to put Aiden Hutchinson on the other side. Um, but I, I, I think just if Debo Samuel plays, I don't think the Niners have a chance just to be honest, because they're so skimpy on the back end. The back end is just not solidified. The back end is just not elite enough or or even um, average enough even, you know what I'm saying, barely even average enough to uh, keep the receivers in front of them and to, you know, guard the receivers correctly out of their breaks and stuff like that and to just not allow big plays downfield. I just don't think that the uh, defense is competent enough with with the Lions to do that, in my opinion, um, they have a great, they have a good front seven. But like I said, and C.J. Gardner Johnson is good, but he can't do it by himself. Uh, and so I think you know that'll result in, especially if Debo plays, that'll result in um, you know just a lot of scoring for the Niners. Uh, I see Debo having a touchdown. I see um, uh, Brandon Ayuk. I think he's very underrated, very underrated in the league. Um, he's a tr- tremendous route runner. I see him, you know, having a touchdown. Of course, Christian McCaffrey, I mean, he he can pretty much run through anything. He might be the best running back in the league now. Um, and then Jawan Jennings, George Kittle, I think it would just be too much for the Lions defense to kind of handle. Um, and then on the other side of the ball, I think, you know, the Lions, they do feel like they have, a, they have a darn good offense. But I think that, that 49ers defense is really going to show up um, and it's going to make it tough. So that's why I say the 49ers coming out of the NFC. Mm-hmm. All right, so I got, of course, I got the Chiefs winning uh, over the Ravens. Uh, I think it's just something to be said about championship DNA. Um, I'm watching the Chiefs this year win with defense, which is something that I hadn't seen from them. Um, I do think they took an offensive hit after Airbnb left. I, I am on that train, too. Um and I think that'll be the difference. Is they're just, they they've been here before, um, they know how to operate in these situations. I do, I, like I said, I think uh, the Ravens with Mark Andrews coming back, with Isaiah Likely playing the way he is playing, uh, with Lamar Jackson playing the way he's playing. You brought up an interesting point. He's starting to stay in the pocket. Uh, he's starting to manage the game better. Uh, <laughs> which is a dangerous thing for a quarterback with his skill set. So I think that game will be very close. Um, I don't know. I was I was looking at the Chiefs' schedule, and, like, they, they only scored, like, 40 points maybe one time this year. I think it was on the – I want to say the Browns. I can't remember. But um, that's crazy to think about when you think about their offensive production in recent history. So uh, – but if, if you can take a team like that that can – you know, they're not producing offensively right now, and they can start to win with defense. Um, that just speaks to championship DNA to me. So I think that the Chiefs uh, edge this one out. Um, as far as the Niners and the Lions, of course, I want the Niners to win. But this Lions team, Lions team scared me, man. Like, they take on the personality of their coach. I love their coach. People were ragged on him when he went forward <laughs> for, uh, from the seven-yard line with that two-point conversion. I personally loved it. Like, if you say that beforehand, he was like, man, we going for it. We're going for the win. And to have the gumption to just go out there and do it, man, even though they lost that game, those those guys rallied behind them. Um, I think they have an amazing defensive line. Um, and I think that the quarterback doesn't put the ball in harm's way. 
So you won't see a lot of turnovers from Jared Goff, I don't think. Um, but I think ultimately with the running game, Trent Williams, Christian McCaffrey, uh, some George Kittle, Brock Purdy spreading the ball around, I think uh, we get the win. Hey man, only time will tell. Now I can't <laughs> wait for good old championship Sunday. These are two. Man. These are these are gonna be two good games, man. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So, but <laughs> we ain't gonna talk about if if this team make it to the Super Bowl. We're gonna talk about when whoever win the AFC and NFC championship game, then we'll start talking Super Bowl talk. But hey. We'll see what we're going to do. Man, I just added this one in just because it's the end of the year. <laughs> I wish I had um, uh, my notes on what everybody's predictions was for the year. I know I had – I said one name that is possibly going to win defensive player of the year, and that's Miles Garrett. But we're going to see. I don't know. I don't know. That's the only one I that think I it said TJ Watt. I think yeah. it said TJ. Yeah. But I'm just going to run down just yeah. stuff off the top of my head. Y'all just tell me who y'all think just going to win no award. Then we're just going to move on to the mock draft. So, offensive rookie, yeah, I think we all are going to be <laughs> unanimous on this, but we're going to see who you got out line. We're just going to go down the line. Oh. Uh... I have that running back from um at I'm just CJ Stroud, bro. CJ CJ Stroud, brother. Not even close. The Haven. CJ, baby. <laughs> CJ, man. Hands down. One of the greatest rookie quarterbacks ever. Definitely yeah. up there. Yeah, man, the guy that almost beat the dogs last year. This close from beating the dogs. CJ Stroud, number seven, man. Yes, sir. He should have beat him, man. Blame the kicker. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's CJ, man. It's not even close. Man, please, man. All y'all knew all y'all were gonna say CJ, but I ain't saying no CJ. I'm saying CJ. <laughs> <laughs> but just to mention my boy, Jameer Gibbs. Nah, he'd probably get a check up. He'd probably be second. And then Gibbs would be third for that vote. I didn't want to mention my Alabama boys. They want to show him some love. Because he <laughs> balled. John, John Robinson might be in there too. I thought he went to Georgia. Yeah. Well, we don't know that. John kind of fell off throughout the year. He yeah, he, really he started off hot. Got a really it's, not start. He, it's not that he fell off. <laughs> Team just started loading the box. And terrible, got terrible play calling. When, when you got Ritter as terrible your quarterback and a terrible head coach, this is the results you get. And he still had 1,400 yards from scrimmage. That is true. Mm-hmm. Hey, Cam Newton put his name on the Who y'all got for a defensive player of the year? I mean, well, not defensive player of the year. Uh, rookie. Well, yeah, rookie. Defensive year. rookie of the year. You know what? Right. Texas did it again. Will Anderson Jr. He uh yeah. he came he came with the heat this year. He wait, came wait, 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 went to school lit. Okay, let's why why do we have to do that? <laughs> oh my fault. Why do we my always gotta yeah. do that? My fault. My Ted, fault. don't let him do you like that. Don't let him do you like that, Ted. Well, my fault. So, oh, man, by where your phone is by where you at. And Will Anderson <laughs> is definitely the man this year to be considered. Somebody yeah. somebody on this pod told you doing the drip. Doing a draft like, hey, man, y'all in good shape about the first two picks. I just want to pat myself on the back. That is well documented. Shout out to y'all, man. Y'all y'all got a bright future. I'm loving the Texas. Just give it a new ownership. Yeah, man. Will Anderson. Will Anderson yeah, Will. Man. Yeah, man. Shout out, yeah, to Will Will. Shout out to Will, the Terminator roll tag. You already know. But it was the good old days, wasn't it? Offensive player of the year. Now, this one should be interesting. I don't know. This can go flippity flop with everybody. I don't know who you got as your offensive player of the year. Uh, I I don't even understand how this can go flippity flop. <laughs> Tyreek Hill, like mm. if, if he he can't win the MVP, 
because he ain't get the he ain't get the yards. But I will gladly give him offensive in, in NFL Player of the Year with, without a doubt. I'm also giving Tyreek Hill Offensive Player of the Year. He uh he said he set that two K goal. He got got kind of close, but he didn't make it. But I feel like he was a really good game changer on that offense for Miami this year. I'm actually gonna go a little different. I'm actually gonna go Christian McCaffrey. Um, I know it in the West for the NFC, man. You have over you have darn near 25 touchdowns as a running back. I mean, yet all of them won rushing, but that's special. And he was right there with – at one time it was Lamar Jackson, Brock Purdy, and Christian McCaffrey all meshed in who was going to win the MVP. Then Brock had a bad game, so it just became between Christian McCaffrey and Lamar. Then Christian McCaffrey had got hurt, and so then it was just Lamar. But I, I – C-Mac is tough. I, I think arguably he's the best running back in the league, definitely the most versatile, definitely the most dynamic. Um, and I think he deserves it. I mean, 1,500 yards from scrimmage. Um, like I said, 20, I think 22 touchdowns. I mean, just amazing. So. Yeah, I'm going to go with CMC. Uh, for all the reasons you just stated, man. I mean, <laughs> what can I say? If not for who – well, if not for Lamar Jackson in the MVP race, I think Chris McCaffrey is right there. Like, I think he, he probably may be second. Um Especially at the Brock Purdy's bad game, so. But yeah, fifteen hundred yards, so versatile. Uh, I gotta go. I gotta give it. Let, let me. Can I? Can I give? Can I give a little pushback? Yeah, yeah, sure. A little, a little pushback. For Christian McCaffrey to be the offensive player of the year, you don't mm-hmm. think it was strange at all that uh, he had other people on his team in the race to be MVP, like. You don't think he benefited from all that talent? I think he's a great running back. Don't get me wrong. But I think a lot of, you know, I think he also greatly benefited from the talent around him. You can't, like, do what you did with Atlanta and load the box because you're going to get beat on the outside. You're going to get beat by the tight end. The quarterback is at least, you know, feasible to where he could put the ball in the right place. So I don't know if I'm willing to – put Christian McCaffrey over Tyreek, who is the offense. The, 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 the whole team's offense revolves around him and where he is on the field. Rather than McCaffrey, who is a big part of the offense. But there's a lot of weapons on that 49ers team. Yeah, I don't, I don't see Miami winning as many games as they did this season without Tyreek on it. And, you know. So let me ask you know, this. Rodney Mulder balled out too. I still. Right. He was leaning. And leading Waddell, like Waddell. Point, right? They had some weapons, man. But what Tyreek brought to that offense was a game changer, bro. That was a big game changer. And uh, it made Tua look great in a lot of games. <laughs> That's a valid point, man. I mean. It made Tua look great in a lot of games. At, at one point in the season, wasn't Moster leading the league in touchdowns? Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It they, was both when Moser balled out at running back. But, really but that, but that was because you had to have someone. You had to pull back <laughs> because Tyreek can get behind your defense. That's true. You had That's true. to, you had to respect what he would, how he, how fast he get behind you. Whereas with the 49ers, if McCaffrey went down, I'm not saying that Elijah Mitchell could replace that, but he could salvage that. He could definitely salvage that, and we have proof of it last season. Right. Tyreek was the only one who scored in the playoff we've game. Al- we've also seen CMC with less talent perform, too. So yeah. it's, it's not like he's just – just because yeah. this year he's on a talented when, team. When he had he less talent, we all remember them Carolina mm-hmm. years. What was their what yeah, was the record again? <laughs> when he had less talent, what was the record? Man, well, well, if you if you, if you don't have no quarterback at all, man, we're not talking about records. We are talking about individual awards. Uh, he didn't he have the individual awards when he had less talent. He barely well, the just, well, I he stayed, I get, hurt. he stayed hurt in Carolina. Right. I, I just want to throw out mine because I, I forgot. 
Y'all just going off the rails talking about this. I forgot we just supposed to be giving off a war. Y'all talking about Carolina when they were good. <laughs> <laughs> but I got Tyreek here. <laughs> uh, there you go. But uh, yeah. just quickly, I'm going to go uh, defensive player of the year, coach of the year, MVP, then we're going to move on. Give me your uh, defensive player of the year. T.J. Watt. T.J. Watt. Uh, sack leader of the year, I believe, this year. Um, yeah, just nothing left to say. I think that was my defense play of the year at the beginning of the year. TJ Watt. I'm going to go with uh, Micah. Micah Parsons down in Dallas. Mm. Micah balled out. Dallas just sucks in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm um, gonna go. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm gonna have to be biased, man. I, as an Atlanta Falcon fan, I, I, I know that we didn't make the playoffs, and everyone else that we mentioned did. But I gotta go. JB three, man. Jesse Bates. I mean, he. I mean, he just absolutely transformed our defense. He had, you know, a, a, a big, some big pick sixes for some big turnovers. I mean, uh, was probably the best safety in the league this year, if I'm honest about it. And so I gotta go Jesse Bates. In spite of Jesse Bates, one of the cover guys. Southern hospitality episode. Check it out there. Just want to put them in there. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go with uh I'm gonna go with TJ Watt, sack leader, unblockable off the edge, man. Just the year he had was a special. Uh I, I said it from the Miles. beginning, and I'm still gonna Miles go Garrett. with it. I'm gonna go with Miles Garrett. Yeah. It's not but uh, coach of the year now, yeah. Just uh, I really wish we had more time to talk about it, but just give me a quick uh, who are you picking for coach of the year? Cause we got more uh, topics. That's on the reason why. Mm, uh, Harbaugh, Harbaugh, um. The kind of injuries they took at the beginning of the year at running back and then losing your top receiver who was your tight end and then playing with receivers who, you know, older receivers. It, they, they just they just making it happen, bro. They're making it happen. Offense and defense. They're making it happen. So I'm going hardball. As bad as I would want to give it to my boy, D'Amico, <laughs> Um, I'm gonna give it to uh, Dan, man. I think Dan uh, Dan deserves Coach of the Year. They, the things he did with the Lions, bro. Big, big, big turnaround. <laughs> Only reason I don't want to give it to D'Amico is his first year, uh, but it's a close second. But I'm gonna give it to Dan Campbell. I, I gotta go to Miko, man. D'Amico Ryan's. I mean, I, I just what he did to that Texas team. I mean, only winning a couple games last year to propelling them to the playoffs and a playoff win. Yes, that CJ Stroud was a dog, but I mean, what really they was doing on both sides of the football this year, man. Just the culture he established in Houston after everything with Deshaun Watson and all those things with the with the with the GM acting crazy and all that kind of stuff, man. He just established a culture that he really got from New England and Houston. And was like, yeah, man, like, this is what it's going to be. And so I, I say to me, go. Yeah, it's, it's a toss-up between Dan Campbell and D'Amico. Uh, I'm going to give it to Dan just because I like the dude and because uh, D'Amico went to that other school. And that's, that's the only reason. <laughs> Nobody said the Browns coach. And nobody. Uh, Kevin Sufans. No, he is not coach of the year. It's only this is only a two man race, and the only reason why I don't want to give it to my Alabama brother D'Amico Ryan's is because the job that Dan Campbell is doing in Detroit, the simple fact that they are in the NFC Championship game and one game away from the uh, Super Bowl, and especially how folks was, uh, like, so-called NFL experts. I kept, the receipt. yeah. I kept the receipts of their grades. It was number Fs and Ds of Jameer Gibbs that quickly 
backfired on them very quickly. So uh Dan Campbell is is all the way at it is it's just amazing. If he gets them to the Super Bowl, man, the story is just beautiful, man. Cause I'll run through a wall for Dan Campbell. I I don't even play for the brother. <laughs> I do the same thing for D'Amico Ryan's, but it's just just good to see him just grow as a uh, coach. And I just want to throw this one little uh, thing out there, Paul. Um, it was something that I read that Jamel Hill said about Dan Campbell. said, Dan Campbell is the reason why black head coaches can't get jobs. That mm-hmm. did not age well at all. I can <laughs> promise you that. <laughs> It, it 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 was some it was some before this season, Arlon. I know why you're making the face. It ain't because of now. It was some that before the season, but it takes time to build a team. This is why I always tell folks, man. When you lose, when you're trying to change a culture and all that, you have to let folks build. You just can't build nothing in two years or whatnot. Sometimes it works like that, but it sometimes it takes like four years to really, really get the guys you want in there. At, at least, at least, yeah. But final one, then we're going to move on. This should be unanimous. NFL MVP. Quick, quick answers. No explanation, man. Lamar Jackson. Toss it to Lamar. <laughs> no, no, number seven, my favorite player all the time. He's the closest thing to number seven, so definitely Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson, man. I already told y'all who it is. It's Ash and Jackson. Shout out to another cover athlete. I can't remember the episode name, but shout out, shout out to him. And ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't caught on yet, is episode twenty one. And if you haven't, like I said, if you haven't caught on yet, it's literally nothing but rap songs that I love. We're gonna throw some R and B songs on there. Oh, what now? It's just what I'm feeling this week. That's how I come up with the title. So. And it's literally whatever the artist is. It can be Project Pet. It's some of my favorite artists. And I'm a Southern boy, so you're going to get a lot of... It's going to be some names on there you, you ain't probably heard of if you ain't from the South. Maybe Fiend, Mystical, Sea Murder, Soldier Slim, Big Poke. <laughs> Just some guys, man. I, I grew up around... I grew up around uh, older cats like uh, my boy Tez right here. Hey, man, don't put me out there like that, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Some little older cats. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm sorry, man. I grew nah, up I'm, around I'm okay with you. Yeah, I'm about to say, I and one of my cousin's best friend. So just got to shout him out. Rest in peace, Parlay, man. Rest in peace, mm. Parlay. But. I'm trying to see though, man. NFL mark draft. Uh, we we can talk about this real, real quick. Everybody got a team on here. Everybody got a team. So everybody just name. Well, let me just throw that out there. The NFL mark draft. Uh, Mel Kiper drops his latest mock draft one one point zero. So I, I just want to see who which pick. Would you want your team to pick? So I already know the Falcons are gonna need a quarterback. I don't know what the 49ers need, but I know what my team needs. So I guess I start mine to give everybody just a little time. I want Jaden Daniels or Caleb Williams, but Caleb Williams seems like somebody's gonna jump up there because I don't see the Chicago Bears draft unless they trade uh Justin Fields. Which is probably likely spot for him is Atlanta, which would probably be awesome for Atlanta in many, many ways. And then Kyle Pitts can actually thank God above so he can continue this Hall of Fame career that he's supposed to be having until somebody stunning his growth off the Smith <laughs> trash. <laughs> but I would love to see the Washington Commanders. Please change the name. Draft uh Jaden Daniels. Mr. H Town, man. You look like you ready. Who you want your guys to go pick? I don't know where you pick it. 
Oh, man. Uh, to be honest, I don't even know where our pick is at. I know we have a lot of picks this year. Uh, I want us to just get get a premier receiver. Um, if not, uh, it's one in the like draft. It's a lot of them in the draft, honestly. It's a few of them. Yeah. Uh, wishful thinking, I would love for us to get Harrison Jr., but you know, he's so far up on that draft board, I don't see it. Or, uh, what's his name from um, Washington, Adunze or I forgot, Adunze, 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 Rome, Adunze, and uh, you, what you got, Napier from um, LSU, LSU, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, uh, those are some dogs, yeah, um. I'm not too hip on all the, the top linebackers. If we could get a dope linebacker this year, that would be fire too. But uh, I, I think we should we should draft another cool receiver or get us a dope linebacker this year. Cool, cool. <laughs> I'll go. Um, I don't know if people know this, but my team is the Green Bay Packers. <clears throat> so, so you took that hot air this weekend, eh? Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. But I didn't expect. I didn't want those shake. <laughs> um, so we, we, I have the Green Bay Packers, and um, we're number twenty-five. Correct me if I'm wrong. We're number twenty-five in the uh, in the upcoming draft. So what we need is an offensive lineman. Um, I would say we're looking for some offensive linemen, and one person who kind of stands out to me is um. The offensive lineman from Oregon State, Talese Fuaga. And um, he's a big guy, big guy, big body, about 6'6, 6'7, 330 plus pounds. Um, despite, his, despite his size, very loud on his feet, uh, very good run, run blocker. And his length and size make him really good at pass protection. And I think that is something that we could use for Jordan Love. I think Jordan Love has a good arm. Um, having a little more time in the pocket would serve him well as he learns how to go through his progressions quicker and, and you know, as they get more wide receiver help, obviously. So that's what I'm looking forward towards an offensive lineman as uh, this team continues to get better. Yeah. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I I hadn't kept up with our draft picks because we're winning. <laughs> so, um, but I I say that we need a, a tackle for sure. You got Trent Williams coming back for year fourteen, but you you got to ask yourself how long he's gonna be able to do it. He still looks like he's doing it at elite level, but um, uh, fourteen years is a long time. So, uh, I say we replace that. In the offensive line, uh, we lost with Mike McGlinchey last year. So, yeah, I think a tackle would be in order. Um, that's the only place of need that I could see. Maybe a safety, but we got Hufunga coming back. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I think we go, I think we go online. I actually trust that they'll make the right pick. I think John Lynch has proven himself to be a great GM. So, yeah. Yeah, man. So as far as my Falcon, man, um, I was sitting here looking at looking at what Mel Carper said. He predict us, predicts us getting an Alabama boy, Dallas Turner, uh, outside linebacker. Um, and I will say Alabama's blessed us. They gave us Julio Calvert and all that, but uh, nah, man. Um, but um, but you be hey, my fault to cut you off. But you be hating on us, man. But we giving y'all gifts. I- I'm a Georgia fan. Y'all are our biggest rival. We have but it Alabama. don't matter, man. We give y'all gifts. We give yeah, y'all I gifts and you treat us like that. I'm sorry. I, I appreciate get that out. Hey, that's fine. That's fine. Nah. But, uh, I mean, that's fine. But, um, I mean, we – quarterback is the need. This, this is, And this is my thing. I be talking to my friends about this all the time. I want Justin Fields. I want Justin. If you're from Atlanta, you played at Georgia for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You yes, the 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 record is bad. 10 and 28 is really bad, but your skill set is phenomenal. And all you need is a quarterback coach and a good offensive coordinator and weapons to make you good. Like all he all he, literally he didn't get his first legit weapon to his passion when he got DJ Moore. 
Imagine him with Kyle Pitts and B. John Robinson and Tyler Algier and Drake London and even John U. Smith. I mean, crying out loud, Scotty Miller. I mean, we we are a quarterback away to me, a quarterback and head coach away from being legit contenders because defense took a tremendous stride this year. And so now all we really need on defense is an edge rusher. And so if we can somehow trade, trade up, trade up, if we're now we have to trade the eighth pick. To get Justin, obviously, you know, we'll have to look second or third round to get a, a defensive edge rusher because that's what the main thing. The, the defense needs a pass rusher. The secondary is good besides Richie Grant. He he, he gets burnt too much. And he kind of pisses me off. But, um, you know what I'm saying, like, we – if we get a if we get a legit pass rusher, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we will be absolute. We'll we'll, we'll be good to go. And so I hope I hope the the main priority is is, is just if we can't get Justin, then I um I wouldn't mind going to Kirk Cousins route, uh just for veteran leadership. Now draft wise, I would want Jaden. I would want K. Look, can't get him. Get Jaden. Can't get him. Get Michael Penix, um Jr. Um, I mean the, the guy is extremely accurate, especially if he has an offensive line. Um as, as far as quarterback, I don't want Drake May. Do not want him. Do not want JJ McCarthy. <laughs> like, uh, I don't want I don't want no white quarterback. I'm just being honest. I want no black quarterback in that back in that mode. Uh, I mean, cause Desmond Ritter, no, he I mean I just just garbage. Now this year we didn't have no pass game coordinator, nor did we have a quarterback coach. So he's out there, I don't know. I, I, I'm surprised he even did as good as he did, but um, and then Taylor Heineke is just a good backup. But I need I need me a black quarterback in Atlanta. I, 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 they don't got to be not like number seven, but just something to bring that culture back. So that's why I would want Justin um, back in Atlanta, back in his hometown, you know, doing his thing. So yeah, this is a big draft for us. Big, big. Man, did you did you get everything off your chest, man? It just looked like you yeah. just had to let that, that one out, man. That I was, was like, hey, man, cook, bro. <laughs> cook. Go. That was therapy. And that was, I was like, man, you can, Soccer, I can, man. I, I can hear the frustration in your voice, man. Falcon fan <laughs> syndrome, man. Falcon fan syndrome. I've been a Falcon fan all my life. And the frustration we go through just, oh, man, hey, Cam new Cam Newton just put his name in the hat for that job. Hey, man. Watch. Hey you man, I, I love Cam, but when Cam <laughs> said that, I was like, "Hey, bro, happy retirement, then, bro." Cause that ain't yeah, good. man. Yeah. I can tell you, folks in Atlanta mess with you. They'll come by the hookah bar, show you love and all that. But hey, and do with all the other business bitches that you're doing. But playing quarterback for the Falcons is not what you want. Cause man. I don't see them. I don't think they want you there. But I, hey, shout out to you. But <laughs> yeah, I. I totally agree with you on that. Um, I, I just feel like it just needs a black quarterback for the Falcons right now. Justin Field would be an awesome pick. But for my commanders, I already said it, ladies and gentlemen. I just want Jaden Daniels. Don't want Drake May. Thank God Mel Kuyper put Jaden Daniels as the number two pick. I just mm-hmm. want to just tag Washington every day. Jaden Daniels. <laughs> Jaden Daniels. And if they pick somebody else, I probably tell my house <laughs> because we the guy's phenomenal, man. So shout out to him. But ladies and gentlemen, we got the Hall of Fame class of 2024 for the MLB. I'm actually kind of upset with this because it was some guys that. I really wanted to see in the Hall of Fame. Andrew Jones still don't understand how he's not in the Hall of Fame. This is just something quick. I just want to just give a shout out to him. Uh, but the guys that made it was Joe Maurer, well deserved. Adrian Beltre, well deserved. And uh, Todd Helt, shout out to Todd, well, well deserved. It took long enough for them. Yep. The MLB Hall of Fame got to be some of the hardest Hall of Fame to, to get into. Man, I swear to God, bro. They do not be playing with these votes, dog. But uh, I just want to just give a quick shout out to them because it was announced tonight. Andrew Jones, you're going to be in there one day, brother, after they stop with this terrible voting because I don't I don't know how you're not a Hall of Fame. If Joe Maurer made it before you, 
And you, I, I, I don't know. And I, I love Joe, but it's not over Andrew. Didn't but, Gary Sheffield miss it too? Yeah, and Gary Sheffield, wow. Barry Bunt. It, it's so many names I can really go down. I'm just trying to give. Like, I ain't never going to put Barry in there. I ain't never going to put Barry in there. It's going to have Pete Rose Ooh. deserves to be in there. It's so, it's so many guys, man. Baseball is the baseball writers are just full of it, bro. Like all of them are just full of it. I don't know, the man. The steroid era messed all that man, stuff. Man, if, if 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 steroid era messed up everything, Big Poppy shouldn't even be in there, but he's in there. So really, you think he did steroids? It's proven. <laughs> really, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's proven. He he's in there. Wow. So and you and. It, Alice Rodriguez not in there. If, if you let Big Poppy in there, you gotta let the guys in. That's all I'm yeah. saying. You take you take away the steroids, <clears throat> but that's the thing, man. I see now you're getting me talking about this. But I didn't want to talk about. <laughs> I'll just say this. They said like, and I'm glad that uh, some of the writers be saying that, like Stephen A. and them. They said you take away steroids from some of these guys. A lot of these guys are now Hall of Fame. Sammy Sosa is one of them. And I had to think about that, and I was like, "Damn, yeah, yeah." And but Barry Bonds, Hall of Fame before any of all that, yeah. anything mm-hmm. before all that. Mm-hmm. So, so, so here's the thing: do, do steroids help you like locate the ball too during the pitch? No, no. They just help you hit for power. Still got to hit it. Still yeah. got to hit the ball. Okay. Right? okay. And, so, with that being said, I don't understand why they make this steroid thing such a big deal. Like, I understand. But at the same time, this isn't like you're racing. This isn't track where everything is based purely off your athleticism and strength. This is something that also takes a, a unique skill set to hit a cur- to hit a curveball, to have your eyes differentiate between a change ups and, and, and fast Slider. pitches and sliders and sinkers. Mm-hmm. Like it it you know, it there there's a skill that you need. In that, and steroids can't help with that mm-hmm. skill. So to take away some of these home run experts' uh, achievements just because of a little little injection <laughs> here and there, like it, it, it's 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 it's. Bro, like, I'm so glad you said it. My fault, David. I'm about to let. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, go on, say you gonna say. Yeah, because <laughs> only thing I was about to say, bro. I'm so glad you made that point because I ain't never really thought about it like that. Like. When it comes to track, yeah. that is worse than baseball because you still yeah, have sure. to hit the ball, mm-hmm. which is extremely yeah. hard. Oh, it's yes. One of the hardest things so yes. just a simple yes. fact, I'm like, bro, you still have to hit the ball. That That is a real skill <laughs> to hit like a curve slide and all that that we just named. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm glad you said that. Go ahead. Yeah, Dave, major. I, think, I think the biggest issue with that is – a lot of these guys were game changers, hitting these home runs, winning the games that they won, the way that they won the games, to, to be able to knock these balls off the park. It's one thing to hit uh, to hit a baseball, keep your eye on the ball, and be able to actually locate it and hit it. It's another thing to be able to not only hit it, but to knock it off the park the way that they were. And I think that's where the big steroid issue comes into play because you got guys who are – who were winning games off of that, you know. So um, to, to kind of get away from the steroid thing for a second, a uh, few guys that I'm I'm kind of upset didn't make this list, A-Rod, of course, Manny Ramirez, and uh, mm. and I know Andy Pettit, he's, you know, hey. I'm, Andy Pettit, I thought Andy yeah, Pettit was not, a Hall of Famer. Yeah. He's not a Hall of Famer, not yet. So, uh he lost out in the votes, but those are my top three guys that uh, I hate to see that uh, got snubbed this year. But um, yeah, that's that's what I gotta say about that one, man. But yeah, the uh, the steroids knock things out the park, man. Them balls was going into the parking lot and <laughs> stuff like that in the steroid era, man. So you know, I kind of get why they're so uh, strict on this right now. So I think that I think that Major League Baseball though is like hypocrites for that though because they profited off the steroid era like mm-hmm. they made so much money off of jersey sales. People mm-hmm. were selling out stadiums to see these dudes come out there and hit 70, 80 home runs. Mm-hmm. It's just it's, it's mad hypocritical. 
Oh, yeah, they didn't, they're not giving that money back. <laughs> <laughs> and that and that's the thing that's so funny about that, bro. They they're not giving one penny of this money back. It was to dude, nobody. It was exciting era in baseball. Like it's a lot of yeah. people don't even that watch baseball during that era that don't watch baseball no more. Mm-hmm. It was Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire. I'm I'm talking about live TV. Like I mean, sold out stadiums everywhere they went. Oh yeah. man, mm-hmm. we can name so, a lot of them. <laughs> That was it. You don't usually get sold out uh baseball stadiums only for like doing regular yeah. season, you only get them for like uh opening day, uh the all-star game, mm-hmm. and then for a big record coming up. That's all Bruh. the thing you get it for. But I um I I used to go to the Tampa Bay Rays game all the time when I was in Tampa. And if you look at I have it on my Facebook, I always get these front row seats tickets. Twenty thirty dollars, and they have wow. a lot of stuff in the stadium. Like they have live stingrays and stuff, baseball pitch. It's amazing in there. If you ever, if you ever get a chance to go to Tropicana Stadium, go. It's amazing in there. But you can get, you know, you can get these tickets. And they used to, Tampa had one of those um, indoor stadiums where it was really easy to hit home runs. So everybody always hits home runs in there. But man, it's um, yeah baseball isn't you know looked at with the same type of vigor that it used to be looked at back in the day and and I never attribute it to like the lack of home runs and offenses but yeah that that could be it yeah man shout out shout out to the class man but yeah it is it's anytime I already know I'm gonna get pissed off every year by the class because Barry Bunch supposed to be in there with a court hold that grudge so after your 10 years, then it is based on uh I think the the veterans committee, I think that's what they call them, veterans committee. So like the uh, old baseball players have to vote me. So and I think his time already passed on that clearly. And those guys still ain't voted me, which I think they some haters, they some clowns and all that. Put the man in the hall of fame. Most definitely. NBA trade. He won what? Five of them championships, man. Come on. How can NBA mm-hmm. make it? Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? Andy Pettit? Andy, Andy Pettit. Got five oh, yeah. World Series championships, man. Right. Wow. Andy Pettit has I, a, that. I think Andy Pettit, yeah, because you get that. I think he had like a Cy Young, a couple out, more than a couple. Uh, all. So I like, bro, come on, bro. Look at the man resume, bro. It's like, like, come on, let's let's stop this, dog. And they before we, up, I thought before he was we, actually in the Hall of Fame until you said it. That, that, and that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I thought he was in there until he said it. I'm like, he ain't in the Hall of Fame. I got stuff well, on. I don't, I don't want to get on Josh about this because I mean, it just crossed my mind again. And then we're gonna move on to the NBA trade real quick. You said who told you was was better? Uh, this Ravens team was better than uh 2000. Ravens defense. The uh my JLC our, our JLC instructor at uh at my you school ne- at Howard. He uh he coached baseball with me. You need uh, to tell a- him to go get drug test. <laughs> I mean, he's the biggest Raven fan. I know. I, I, mean, I, 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 I have. He, I, I'm he t- loved that 2000 Ravens. I, I don't care what to, to just say they just had Ray Lewis. It's almost laughable. Like Rob like Wilson just Wilson. wasn't walking around here, but. Yeah. Like Goose one walking around, like Chris McAllister one walking around. You're like, hey, bro. Like Peter Bull, where just one walk. Hey, man. Jamie Sharp. Hey, man. Come on, man. I'll, I'll go through that line. Of, that man had the audacity to say that. I just wanted to get that out of the way because I didn't get that out. But uh, NBA trade, uh, Terry Rozier, um, traded to the Miami Heat for Cal Lowry in a first round pick. But of course, the NBA trade deadline is approaching, <laughs> and so it's going to be some names on the move. And I like how they move the uh, NBA trade deadline before the All Star game. So it's like oh, you get sure. all the trades out of the way before the All Star mm-hmm. game. So we expect some uh, big names to move right now. So what y'all think about this trade so far? I think the Miami Heat uh, got a. Um, 
I think they, that's a great deal for them for, to get Terry mm-hmm. Rose in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they need, good they, offense. they need a more offense. They need a more mm-hmm. offense. Um, mm-hmm. And that that'll, that'll give it to them. You know they have the legs to keep up with a Terry Rozier, too, because they're one of the most in shape, uh, well, most in shape teams, you know, with the heat culture, their fitness test. So they're, they're really good with, uh, they'll be really good with keeping up with his young legs. Pause. Um, <laughs> one thing that one one um, one thing that I am really monitoring. I'm monitoring two things, and it hasn't happened yet. But I'm trying to see if they pull the trigger. I'm monitoring Golden State to see if they pull the trigger on Trey and Draymond. It's been reported that everybody's up for grabs except for except for Steph. And the reason I say pull the trigger on those two because those two have some of the most value. I'm also willing, I also want to see what the Lakers are going to do if they're going to end up trading. Um, what's the white guy's name? Uh, Austin Reeves. Austin, Austin Reeves. Reeves um, attempting to get um, maybe a Bruce, maybe a, a Bruce Brown or a, uh, who else is out there? Or Bruce Brown or Jante Murray. So, that's kind of what I'm waiting to see. Um, Siakam was traded as well, right? Yeah, I like that. Yep, trade. went to Indiana. Trade, yep. yep, Siakam like to Indiana. That's, that's, that's a done deal. That, that's gonna that's yeah. gonna be good. That's gonna be good. Um, uh, when um, uh, what's the name comes back? Man, all these names are skipping my mind. Um, when their point guard comes back, Tyrese Halliburton. Halliburton. When Halliburton comes back, because Indiana likes to run. And Siakam yeah. is extremely fast on the court. So all of this will, you know, all of this is going to make some great NBA. And also, I heard the Milwaukee Bucks have brought in Jay Crowder, which will help with their defense um, to make yeah. up for some of the loss of defense that they sustained when they um, traded Drew Holiday. So there's some interesting stuff going on. And um, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Um. I think for me, man, uh, it's Terry Rozier, Kyle Lowry trade. Feel bad for my boy Kyle, man. Feel bad for my boy. Uh, I think this is it's not not good for him. It's great for Terry, though. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but that's not my favorite uh, trade that, that went down. My favorite trade that went down, man, was uh, R.J. Barrett going over to uh, Toronto. I think that's a really, really, really good move for RJ's future. He's from Toronto, or he's from Canada. I don't know what part, but uh, I think that was a really dope landing for him. Pascal going over to uh, to the Indiana Pacers is going to be crazy, man. Like mm-hmm. He's with Halliburton and uh, with Turner and all them guys over there, bro. That's going to actually uh, – that's going to make that team a lot better. They're already on a, a, a great forward trajectory with uh, – where they're going with their team. So I really like that Pascal uh, swap out, man, over there in Indiana. So so I got to say on these trades. Oh, yeah, man. one more. Trade oh, Young to San Antonio. Make it happen. Done. I, don't, I don't see it happening this year, but that would be a, a great uh, trade, though. That would be dope for trade and dope for women. But I don't, I don't see it happening right now. It could happen. This, it could happen this off season. Off season, we'll see what happened though. But yeah, man, as a, as a Hawks fan, oh my bad. Go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, as a Hawks fan, man, one that would be catastrophic. Uh, I would probably uh, <laughs> have a heart attack if we lost Trey because he's literally been our franchise the last five years. Now we should have gotten Luca in hindsight, but that's a whole nother ball game for a whole nother day. Um, but anyway, I Dejounte Murray is a dog. I mean, this guy's a stud. He, I'm actually starting to like him a little bit more than Trey. Um, because I mean, he's clutch. He hit two game winners last year. On, I mean, last week. 
on the Magic and on the Miami Heat. Great defensively, can rack up the assists, can rebound. He's from Popovich's system. So, I mean, his thinking about basketball is just different, and he is amazing. So to even still think about, oh, I heard today we trying to hook up a three-team trade with the Lakers, the Hawks, and somebody like, no, for DJ, no, 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 don't get rid of him. Like, he's he's it. Trey's hurt right now. He got a concussion. We need Time to DJ. blow it up. You know what I'm saying? Time to and blow so it's it up. like, but 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 why blow it up? You made the playoffs the last three years, including one Eastern Conference Finals. I mean, all we really need is a legitimate three because DeAndre Hunter has showed he's just average and he's injury prone. Even though he was the fourth pick in the 2019 NBA draft, he's average and he's injury prone. So I need a three. If we would have got Pascal Siakam, I would feel really good about us. We didn't. Oh, well, Clint Capella's good. Big O's good. Bogey's inconsistent. Jalen Johnson is um, – he's 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 going to be a future All-Star. Um, but I just – I hope we – so, one, I hope we don't trade DJ um, and um, because we, we need him. And then as far as the Warriors – I mean, they just they need a big man. Um, so I don't see them get rid of the the glue Dr- Dr- Draymond Green unless they can get somebody legit because they know they still have a championship window as long as Steph is there. Steph, I think, will retire in the next four or five years, and and you know now that'll you know that'll that'll be a different ball game. But I don't see them getting rid of Draymond. Yeah, I'm about to say. Um, oh, go ahead, Ted. My fault. Oh no! I was just gonna say I like the uh, the Siakam trade uh, to Indiana. I mean, he he was a hot commodity. Yeah, everybody was trying to trade for this guy. I also like uh, R.J. Barrett going to Toronto. He um, he's not like in New York. He was a spot up shooter. Like they was just like sticking him in the corner and stuff. Like now you see him in Toronto putting the ball on the floor, running the court. Um, and let's see, the Warriors, as far as Draymond, I just think they missed their window, man, because who wants Draymond Green? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, for what you're going to have to pay him oh, to come nah, in nah. and put mm-hmm. up a triple single? Like, who <laughs> wants Draymond Might Green? As well, don't I tell Mo- mm-hmm. Milwaukee would take him. Milwaukee would swing pass God. Like, he got a swing pass Milwaukee Hall of take Fame him. badge. Like, man. Nah, <laughs> yeah, see, Milwaukee, Milwaukee would take him. Yeah, Milwaukee would take it, but, no, but you, you, you just can't. But they can't. I, it's too much money on the uh, books. He's a free agent. I just never, year. I've never been big yeah. on Draymond Green, man. Just like his I thought he signed. Set. He just signed a new deal. I don't he think did. so. Yeah, I thought, I thought he, he was looking like for a deal. Last, what, mm. year before last. No, I thought, I thought. Yeah. If we don't get mm. traded, he's gonna end up like Udonis Haslam. He's the Haslam of that squad, bro. Just <laughs> I can see that. Around. Draymond Green on the bench. You Draymond, I'm, I'm just saying no, he's, no, he's no, going to no, hey, You done it, hey? No. If they no, don't get rid of him, I got Draymond Green. I, 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 all day I, I, you done his has no. If they oh yeah, don't I'll tell you, get I, rid of him though. I'm just saying it, what he means to the team. That's all. I'm I saying. got I got way more respect. Well, I love <laughs> UD, because uh, he I think he a good dude. Draymond, I have. Uh, I I got a lot of respect for uh, Draymond or whatnot, but I believe Draymond is the better play because uh, you can uh, use him for more. But just to, uh, he knows end how this, to pass the ball to people. Is Jersey still retired like you, Vito? Know? <laughs> Say it again. Is his Jersey gonna get put up in the Raptors like you did? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, no, for sure. That's yeah, gonna get put in the sure. Raptors. Not, just sure. he, he I'm not even gonna get a team that you Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm not. But yeah, he's definitely getting his jersey uh, hung up, man. He he definitely accomplished way a lot more in uh Golden State than uh Udonis has. But um, I can see the Lakers trading for him though. Yeah, no, nah, they, they, they 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 they, they need they need all the shooters they can get. That what they talking about. Uh, they like Delonte the Murray. They talking about him yeah, going yeah. to the Lakers, but. We gonna see, man. And if this man Lakers keep brushing, this man keep brushing his head. Hey, man, I'm about to call you 360 in a minute, man. You got a 360 oh, wait, wave, I got green. 360 waves, and yeah, I, just, you know, you know, you know, I got a bounce back. 
You know, I just about to put the hot towel on his head, boy. If I can go through the whole process, <laughs> gotta, I gotta keep it going. I got that. Wait, I'm spot. telling you, boy. If I don't see no waves, I'm gonna get. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm on. I'm on your by, head. By, by my uh daughter's <laughs> first birthday, boy. I'm gonna call you Mister 180 <laughs> instead of Mister 360. I'm trying, bro. I'm trying. I gotta. I gotta train it now. I like man, this man brushing his hair like um he uh what's the old boy name uh poet of justice. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What's Joe Torre? Uh, what's Joe Torre? Chicago. Chicago. <laughs> to get it. It. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Brush that week. <laughs> <laughs> so funny, bro. I laugh at it all the time. I'm like, hey, bro, that sounds a little personal, bro. Trying to get but, that dog. I'm trying to get that. But like P Diddy son. Joel and B, you know, I'm not even, I'm not even going there. Joel and B, seventy points. Um, shout out to Cat for dropping sixty two. In a loss, why they say in a loss? I'm just the got there. on his ass. Yeah, that, they that took that him out the so, game, right? That yeah, that was so weird, bro. I still don't even know the reason why. Oh, because, because they say he's a defensive. He said I don't he's just not doing. They say it was defensive liability. If I'm not mistaken, what? if I'm not mistaken, they say it's somebody defensive liability. I said, hey, bro, I don't care who's the defensive liability. If somebody got 62 points in an NBA game, you need to be feeding him the basketball. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> clearly he, that, that was like, bro, he, he was just sounding like a hater, and that jump was weak. I thought that was a lame excuse. Uh, if you didn't have a good record, I would be calling for your resignation right now because that was. I'm like, mm-hmm. bro, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, that's why he scored four in the like fourth. That. He scored wow. four points in the fourth. Wow, crazy. Coach but hated on him. Embiid uh, with his seventy points was dogging him, and he went against Wimby last night, mm-hmm. and he was balling, 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 balling. And so it ain't even necessarily about this topic that I want to talk about with, uh, with the 70 points or whatnot, because we all pretty much going to say the same thing. He was balling. It's the second part to it, top five bit men in the NBA. Right now, it can be power mm-hmm. forward. It can be center or whatnot. And I can tell you right now, easily the bit three, not in no order, is definitely uh, Joel um, Giannis. And Joker easily, those three are in the conversation regardless of position. <laughs> and uh, I don't, I don't really know, man. You can, you can throw AD in there sometime, yeah, but I'm crazy, nah, bro. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, bro. Hey, bro, I'm <laughs> a Lakers fan, crazy. man. Yeah, street clothes, crazy. man, man, <laughs> man. You about to blame the man for being hurt, bro? Yeah, bro. Always down. <laughs> bro. You can't help that. Oh, yes, you can. It's the way you train, bro. You, you're not. It's the bro, way. you can't make your ankle stronger, bro. What are yeah. you talking about? Yeah. Oh, hey, bro. It's, it's certain, in certain ways, I'm like, bro, you get you. Bro, bro he ain't have, bro, he ain't out of shape, bro. What are we talking about? I'm not about, saying bro? he's out of shape, but it's literally, it's, it's literally uh, talking about Bro, I heard this come. I can't remember who said it, dog. No, uh, that was saying the way you train. He said, man, he needs to train with LeBron. It ain't got to do with. He said it. No, nope. I remember. Stephen A. Smith yeah. said it. Yeah, here we. He should. It's, Steve, it's Stephen A. Smith, sir. We're gonna put some respect <laughs> Stephen on <A>. Stephen <laughs> A. Smith, and the reason why we're gonna put some respect on him because he's a respectable journalist. I he inspires me. He has a great book. You need to read the book. Until you read the book, you can't call him that. <laughs> Shout out to Stephen A. Smith. I'm not going to take this anymore. I heard it too many times tonight. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, man, who, who else? Clearly, those are the uh, two. I, I'm, I'm really trying to search the other guys right now. Just thinking about I'll, it. I'll give you a call. I like Bam out of bio. Yeah, man, man, I'm, man, I'm I'm but I, I put uh, I, feel like I put um, I put what about Julius Randle, guys? 
Nah, no. bro. I go He's Zion over Julius. I'm going Zion over Randall. Oh, no, I'm not going no Zion over Julius. Now. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm definitely doing that. Are you that. serious? No. I'm definitely doing I, that. I, I, I'm, I, I'm, yeah, I'm I, I, Zion is I think definitely. Uh, Zion is. I got. Yeah, you got to put Siakam in there, right? He's more of a three to me, in my opinion. Julius, what about Chet, man? Three, four. What about my boy Chet? Chet. Chet, He's on the way. I like Chet. Chet is hard, like bro. Chet, Chet Holmgren is on the really way, good. but he ain't, he ain't in top five. He ain't top five. You trading Chet for Bam? Yeah, I'm taking Chet over Bam. If I got to pick a player and I'm putting yeah. him on my team, I'm sorry. I'm getting Chet. I could yeah. just say KD. Yeah, he's especially long term. <laughs> I, like, I like Bam, but I, I what about, Chet, um, Chet can do a lot more. Dude in yeah. Memphis, uh, Jerry Jackson. Chet can't. I like Jared Jackson. Jared. Jackson was, yeah, I'm not putting Jared. I'm not putting Jared. I mean, Jared Jackson over Zion. Nah, Zion. Yeah. Zion's number six. For, Zion. No, Zion's number five for me. Um, I'm going Embiid, AD, Jokic. No order. Embiid, AD, Jokic, Giannis, Zion. I get. I put AD. I put no. AD in there. Out of everybody, just name. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want to switch Zion out for like. Either Cat, Bam, or Sabonis, I can hear that. But other than those three, no. I like Julius oh, Randle. Oh, well, Julius Randle shouldn't even be in this conversation. <laughs> I'm just talking point wise, score wise. That's the only reason I brought him up. Oh, you brought him up. I brought him up, score wise. I said we not we gonna exclude Julius. Oh no no no. Oh no, I thought it was Josh, man. That was I'm like why are you saying Julius Randle. I'm like that was him. But you brought him up. Oh man, yeah. I don't care about no Julius Randle. Man, Julius Randle get his get his ass worked by all them dudes that I just named. <laughs> Literally. I think I'm gonna go with MB, Giannis, Joker. And then I'm going with the young guys on my last two. I'm gonna do Wimby and I'm gonna do Chet. Them my guys. Take it or leave. Right now? Right now. Right mm. now. I can't right now, if I had to, if right I had now, to pick man. out of those top five, I would pick one of those Hey, man, guys. if a man drops 70 on you, you ain't no top five big man right now. It was, <laughs> it was right how now. he He's did. a walking double-double right now, man. He's averaging 20 points and 10 rebounds, man, a game. I mean, he just has a sorry team. No, he got oh, pushed man. around. That man was no, trying to man. front. And beat in the post, and he was just getting thrown out of bounds like a rag dog. Bro. This he is in lead not... we're talking about, man. It doesn't matter. Yeah, and B does more pounds. That's like MB. y'all going against Shaq his rookie year. Come That's on. cool, but guess what? It's a difference between it's different. And beat and beat is like the James Harden of the and let me a let regular me, uh, season. Let me let me, that 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 let, me let me correct you, Dave. <laughs> Uh, Chet's team, Chet's on the Thunder, right? Yeah, yeah. They the number two seed in the West, bro. Yeah, they know. <laughs> I know that. I know they balling. That. They on the sorry. They ain't on the sorry team. But 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 it ain't like you Chet leading that team. It's just SGA on that leading oh, that team. Sure. Still balling. Still balling though, man. Yeah, Matt, but, Matt, but yeah, yeah, Chet is balling. Yeah, he's but balling, but SGA is really leading that way, man. Yeah, he's definitely leading the team. SGA is like the man, but he has a lot of good pieces around him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Isn't, now, isn't Chet still eligible for rookie? But, yes. Yeah, yeah. He ain't played last year. But Chet only averaging about 17 a game, 17 and 7. 17 and 7 rebounds. Zion, Zion is running around with 24. But I'm not naming on him. Or 58% I'm, shooting. And I'm not naming him top five big man right now. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Yep, that, Let him get another year or two. That's but, I'm going to y'all mine. So, look, my bad, bro. I didn't mean to disrupt you. No, um, yeah. Let me, let me, let me just go to Zion Williamson real quick, then I'll give you my five, because I'm sorry, bro. I've thought about this lately, bro. I'm sorry, Arlon. He is overrated, bro. Zion Williamson is, is, is yeah. tremendously overrated. Yeah. Like what 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 does he do offensively? I drive to the basket, I lay it up, or I dunk it. That's, that's it. all that's, there that's all no you need. There is no about LeBron. Where's you don't need bag? to be pretty. It just need to go in the basket. It don't need to be pretty. I don't know why yeah. y'all keep thinking. You you new kids keep thinking you got to score pretty. Nah, bro. I'm not that showed you. Pretty, I saying... can do this. Oh, I can dunk over and over again, bro. 
But what, hey. what, what's the what's the film gonna show? All I gotta do is claw the lane on Zion Williamson. He can't shoot. He's not gonna sauce me up hey. or give me no is nothing. That, all you gotta all do is take. drive to the basket. Is that's all it takes. Why haven't they done? Oh, okay. If, if, thank you. That was, thank you, Ted, for saying that. Thank you, Ted. Why haven't they done it? They because don't. size. Mo most teams don't have a lot. Of, well, I ain't gonna say most. <laughs> Some teams that they go against do not have a lot of size. If you're playing the Warriors all the time, I mean, my God. Yeah, Zion Williams, you're gonna have 30 points. Because there's no one to protect the basket. All he, the best big men except for MB are in the West. Huh? All the best big men except for MB are in the West. Uh, that's Giannis. true, but Zion Williams is not one and, of them. And Giannis. I, Giannis. Porzingis. I, 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 I like Porzingis. I'm not Porzingis. going top five with Porzingis. Yeah, he's he not top five. But I'll go. Yeah, I'll you, go. Said, I, you said all the best. Huh? Yeah. Porzingis kind of fell off to me. Man, I don't want you. I don't want, you, I don't want you to understand. If it was so simple, why everybody haven't done it? Yeah, it can't, that it can't is be done. I, simple. I, I, I'm, I, I'm not saying it's simple, but I'm saying like there. When you, when you think of top players in the league, they have some type of bag, and B got a bag. Jokic got a bag. What's Giannis's yeah. bag? Giannis hold on, got hold on, a bag. Hold on, wait, whoa, whoa. my fault, my fault. Giannis Embiid has a bag. Oh, he definitely yeah. do though. Yes, he definitely yeah, he's do. got skills. Oh, he definitely man. do. Hey, bro, stop it. MB got anyway. skills, bro. I think MB had a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. MB. Yeah. Hey, he'll jump on you. Yeah, he, he can score any way you want it. Like, yeah, 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 until MB just shows up in the playoff. After that, that oh, nah, piss poor F. Piss he's poor F. He's always hurt. That that don't uh, mean he's he's, uh, he's, nah, he's bro. dead. Nah, I don't even want to nah, hear that because you said you said Kyrie have a bad. But he don't always lead a team to wins in the playoffs. Whoa, 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 whoa. So, you said Kyrie Irving doesn't have a bag? I, I No, I said Kyrie does have a bag, but he doesn't always lead a team to oh, win in the said. playoffs. That, because Kyrie he Irving has the bag. That's the same comparison. Defense. Just because you have a bag doesn't mean it always equates to wins every night. But so, We're talking oh, about, so, so, we talking so, about so, someone's so, skill on the court, not if their team won because of it. If Zion Williams Joel and B himself, got skills. Arlen, if Zion Williams was by himself, would he lead the the Pelicans to the playoffs? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Man. It's been proven. Please. Look at Zion's games his first couple seasons. The games he played, look at the record. They didn't make playoff the playoffs. Teams. He got hurt at the end. But when he was playing, they only lost single-digit games. Zion Williams is not taking no team to the playoffs by himself, bro. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, bro. Not not by him. Without C.J. McCollum, without Brandon Ingram, without Jackson Hayes even. Like, no, bro. He, and, and bro, Who's the, the leader? Like, Alvarado. Like, no, bro. Okay. Uh, with, okay, okay go my ahead, bad. My no, go ahead. Go I, was, ahead. I was about to say, bro, before C.J. McCollum got there, who was the leader of that team? I mean, obviously it's going to be Zion. Uh, not, 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 of, not, not, not. Who was the leader of the team? Power. Actually, the leader of the team was actually Brandon Ingram. Oh, you sound you remember, crazy. You didn't yeah, believe that. That's why you that's why you saw. You didn't believe that. You but didn't I, believe I that. mean, by the by default, it was Zion. But I mean he's Zion. not. Yeah, but, bro, but that's Zion. by default because he was picked so high in the draft, bro. Like nah, but it was by, Zion because when he got on the court, you know what time it was. Come on, bro. So so you so you think Zion Williams is unguardable? Yeah, he's a matchup nightmare. <laughs> He's a he's a matchup, bro. It's a lot of people that can't he can't stick he to him, bro. Just, I can name you ten players bro. right now that can guard Zion Williamson with ease. Okay, no, cool. I, I'm just I'm just mad. Giannis, this man just, <laughs> Joel Embiid, doggone. Yeah. I'll say Aaron Gordon, even doggone. It. Look at the stats when they played the Bucks and tell me what the score. Was. Tell me what uh Zion had. That's a hot take. It, no. You talking about one? No, I'm still mad about this Kyrie stuff, man. Don't ever disrespect Kyrie. How did I Kyrie. disrespect Kyrie? I said he had a bag, but his bag didn't lead to a team winning in Boston. It didn't. That it didn't you name it one. You game. name it. That, that's cool. It no, no, okay. I can name that's all those Jason times. He, and I can name all the. I can name all the times he was in Cleveland before LeBron got there. How his bag didn't lead to win. Okay, now tell me. Now Okay. I don't. But tell me, tell me the team that was. Now tell me the team that he had in Cleveland. Was that the same team? That he that when LeBron joined the team was that the same team? But that's not that's not the point. The no, point no, 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 was no, no, no. the point. Yeah, I mean that's that's two different questions. The point was the point was 
hey, just because someone has a bag does not mean that that equates to the winning games. It just means they have they're just a good player. Cleveland wouldn't have a championship without Kyrie Irving. It's proven. They almost had it when he was injured. Almost. What are we talking about? Almost is not good enough. I almost had a V8 30 seconds ago, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. Okay. But at the end of the day, your bag does not have to equip, does not have to equate to like winning games for you to have the bag. Like for you to be an offensive player. It doesn't have to mean you're gonna win game. But he's not like, uh, okay. He has the elite skill of driving to the basket. But I, I, I can't. You, bro. They, 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 they try to compare Zion Williamson to LeBron coming out, bro. That's not I mean, a bad comparison. He's the only one. He's the only one they try to compare to LeBron coming in. And they always gonna try yeah. to compare someone to LeBron. They do. Yeah. They do that. Both the NBA, but all of the comparisons be off. Yeah. Because they compare the whole, him to like greats you'll never see again. Yeah. This is the it's next like Kobe. You're picking, player. You picking say, a player first I round. I Zion never getting hurt. Bench player. If Zion had a really healthy career so far, it would be hard to argue this about Zion. You know what I'm saying? It's just them injuries, man. Different. Like, them injuries messed up a lot of them Pelican seasons, bro. But when he's on that court, he is a difference maker. Yeah. Like, seriously. I mean, yeah. He's a difference maker, but I don't. I just don't see what he does. It's like besides. Then we say it be. That's why I said I didn't want to put KD in there just because how small, just because how small he is. Because KD is definitely up there. I he's better than all of them. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, he's not yeah. better than Joker. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he uh, is. That is yes, Kevin that's Durant. Debatable. That's debatable. Yeah, that is not even debatable. debatable. He's better than Joker. Bro. Uh, he is he's better, better than Joker, than bro. He's he's better better than Joker, bro. <laughs> all around, Joker's better. He's Scoring. Better. With, better. Yes, it's always somebody he's all better. around, but guess what? That's cool and all, but he That's is not better. seeing Kevin Durant. <laughs> not in the game of basketball. One on one. Okay, now here's, 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 here's how I yes, equate it. MVP. Here's how I equate it. When, That's cool. when they try to build got a two team, MVPs. when they try Steve to. Nash. When they, is he better when than they Kobe? tried to build a team around Kevin Durant, did that lead to a championship? Say it again. My fault. When they tried to build a team around Kevin Durant, did that lead to a championship? No, but that's because it was always hurt. Kyrie was always hurt. James no. It, okay, but what about – wasn't he – did they build a team around him in OKC? Yeah. He was young. And, and who they played? He was there for a long time. No, he wasn't. No, they did. No, they they one, they one, one NBA uh, finals appearance. Them, all them boys were young. I hate when folks, not, I'm not saying you, but I hate when folks use that comparison when they go. I'm like not, James Harden was not, no, I'm not I'm saying not even, you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm saying okay. what other folks would say. With, when James Harden, James Harden is not the James Harden that played in Houston. Russell no. Westbrook wasn't playing on MVP level. <laughs> Or oh, whatnot, because I can tell you right now, if all three of them boys were playing at MVP level, the Heat would have had a problem in that series. Yeah, yeah they were young. They were, yeah, they were young. But he could have yeah. got to a finals. But I, I mean, that was I mean, I mean, they, I mean, but they but also were up three one. They were also up three one against the Warriors. That's, I'm not, you know, I'm back saying. in. Yeah. I'm, but all I'm saying is, when Kevin Durant was the focal point of team building, they couldn't get over the hump. Jokic, the minute they made him the focal point, you know, they started getting closer and closer and they eventually got over the hump. So, but why did they get over the yeah, hump? That's a, that, it took them a while. Wow. That team had but been a while. I mean, Kevin Durant was in OKC from what, 07 to 16? But, but no, but why? Yeah, he had it, a while. It, he had a while. And that, Kevin Durant had some really good pieces while he was there. That's really good. Injury. Injury. KD got hurt in 2014, and then he couldn't get along with Russell Westbrook. That was a I'm, rift. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, Russell Westbrook is a better basketball player than Jamal Murray. But Jamal sure. Murray has a better shot than Russell Westbrook. You can depend on – you can actually kick it out to I, I him. Think, Their I, shooting guard that they had was – uh, what's uh, – It wasn't Tabo that year. Was yeah, it Tabo? was Tabo. Tabo yeah, was Tabo. Tabo. Well, you, you want to know what I think – What okay, to – and then they had Kendrick Perkins, bro. Kendrick Perkins. They 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 had they had they had a waste of time. 
they had they had a solid squad. The the real problem was probably the coaching in their offensive uh scheme. That was no, they just it. ain't they just ain't have the shooters like bro. Yeah. The Nuggets have shooters. That's what I'm saying. Joker has a guy back there who can literally play one on one basketball mm-hmm. with any of Light them. He can go. To, he can go to work. That's why you see him go to work on the Lakers, averaging thirty points on the Lakers. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't mm-hmm. nothing. And then you got KCP, and then you got Michael Porter Jr. Mm-hmm. Then you have Aaron Gordon. You that team was solid, bro. That team was just solid. It wasn't like no weaknesses. Mm-hmm. They've been building that for a while too, and then, and then they've yeah. been building that. You just add them pieces, them little small pieces in there, and you see mm-hmm. what happens. Bruce Brown, but, yeah. but I'm telling like you I'm... right now. Oh my fault. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I'm gonna say, gonna say... Oh, Joker. No, I mean if uh, Zion is overrated, Joker's overrated. Hold on, no. before, but, hold on, before y'all, no. before you, before you get everybody pissed off again, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now. <laughs> Because I already know where it's going to go. But I'm going to tell y'all right now. When basketball season really, really get kicked off, I say, I'm i letting the people know now. I just thought about this. When it's playoff time, I'm going to try like something similar to what Shannon Sharp and do with Nightcap. It's probably going to be some a live stream every night <laughs> if it's a big game. And just like mm-hmm. anybody and everybody can just hop on here, we can just talk basketball or whatnot. It's gonna be a full live screen, ain't nothing recorded. This is live, so just be on the watch on that when it get close to playoff time. Or we can probably do it yeah. towards the end of the year so it can just start building up. You already know what to expect. What come playoff time? Because gotcha. I'm gonna tell you right now, when it hit playoff time, the best place to be is social media. Oh, it, I know the NFL is keen when it comes to um, like ratings and all that. That's cool and all. But when I tell you social media is a different place when it's NBA playoff time, <laughs> boy, all this man trans, oh no, boy, you be boy, folks ready to fight, bro. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's a different world out here. So y'all be on the lookout on that. And the final topic of the night. <coughs> Top five comedians. <laughs> I, sh- oh, no, I got to change that. I want to put all time because you got too many legends and all mine mm. are pretty much black. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much all of them. And I'm I'm sorry. It's like You got some guys that would say Carlin and all that. Pretty much anybody that I can name is like the GOAT at what they do. I mean, it, it, it may be one. I don't know. But I'll start off with mine. Oh, uh, I got, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, all of them black. I'll take that back. <laughs> so, in no particular order, personal, I'll put it like this, personal favorite. I believe it's the, the GOAT of <coughs> Movies is Eddie Murphy. Ain't nobody seeing no. Ain't nobody seeing Eddie Murphy because literally he has two of my favorite movies of all time, which is Coming to America and Life. I pretty much quote the movie so life much. My, my bad, bro. My no, bad. go ahead, go ahead. You say whatever. Life, life might be the best movie of all time. It's bro, perfect. It's I perfect. wish. I wish. I was just. In the movie, just to get the <laughs>, laughs, the stuff that didn't make it to the movie, bro. Because, bro, like the outtakes of that, which I know a lot of folks don't know this. Uh, what's my boy name? Um, uh, uh, was it Spanky Johnson? Yeah. What about? Yeah. Him? A lot of folks don't know that Rick that's James. Rick James. Uh. A lot of folks do not know that's Rick James. When I found out that was Rick James, I love the movie a thousand times more. I feel like I know something new about the movie every year. But when I'm telling you, one of my favorite parts in the movie is like literally when the movie just completely ends when they're doing the outtake, is when that man opened up the watch. He's like, damn, this ain't my daddy's watch. <laughs> I'm like, bro, if you just killed that man. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm like, bro. And then I think, uh, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm going too much into it. We can talk about all this in a minute. I'm supposed to be just naming. So, Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, Bernie Mac, <clears throat> Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle. No particular mm. order. But my favorite, best stand up, I mean, best stand up comedian is definitely Richard Pryor. Best movie uh, <coughs> comedian is Eddie Murphy. All right, so this is my um, no. I have one. I have the first. Everybody else is out of order. Number one comedian, in my opinion, in stand up is my thing, Dave Chappelle. I'm going Dave Chappelle. I think he's conquered stand up. After that, I have, in no order, Eddie Murphy. Bernie Mac, Cat Williams, Chris Rock. Now, there I have uh, two honorable mentions. One, Martin Lawrence, the TV show Martin. It is staple. Is a staple. Um, so he's he's always going to be in the in the top comedian role. And number two, honorable mention, Chris Tucker. The Rush Hour series, best movie series, and Friday, the first Friday. Those movies are like stapled in a black community that will live on forever, forever. So those are my top comedians. I'm kind of jealous that you uh, put honorable mentions in there because I was going to do that going <laughs> back around. But I'm going to let everybody else go because I, I'm dev- if nobody mentioned him, so. I'm glad I'm glad you said that we're gonna come back around to the honorable mention. Okay. Uh this is my top five. Um not necessarily in any order right now, but Bernie Mac for sure, Adam Sandler, Eddie mm-hmm. Murphy, Dave Chappelle, and Jim Carrey. Wow, that's a good one. I ain't mad at it at all. Mm-hmm. All right. Um. So mine is uh similar um to uh Arlon's a little little bit. Uh, Cat Williams, Richard Pryor, Bernie Mac, Eddie Murphy, and this is kind of my biased one because I'm a musician as well. Jamie Fox. Oh yeah, he's good. I want to say Jamie too. I wanted to say Jamie too. He gonna he's get my good. honorable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, love Jamie. Yeah. I'm Texas, baby. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, so I got the same names basically, man. Um, got Pryor, Dave Chappelle, Eddie Murphy, uh, Bernie Mac, Chris Rock. Yeah, I think. Uh, Man, Eddie Murphy get a lot of credit for movies, but if his stand-up comedies, Raw and Delirious, are some of the funniest. Like you can't, oh, you, man. you cannot. I was gonna go there. No more. Mm-hmm. Like they so raw that you can't make them no more. If a comedian came out and said some of the stuff that he said on those um those specials, like they'd be canceled. It would cause an uproar. Like those are hilarious. Um, man. Oh yeah, man! If, if if that came out now, dog. Yeah, you can't do that no more. Oh yeah, you can. That's the whole thing about the. But you just got to be bold enough to do it, and that's what I'm saying, that's bro. True. Bernie Mac, Bernie, Bernie Mac would have just thrived off that. It's just like the same thing they said about Pimp C being alive. Like mm-hmm. Boosie is just a baby Pimp C. That's all he is. They said if Pimp C was alive during the internet era, man. You think he'll care about what somebody say? This man go viral every day about what he's saying. (laughs) But since we mentioned honorable mentions, man, Robin Harris, Lord have mercy, Mm. man. Robin Harris, (laughs) folks like to talk about Bebe's kids, bro. F Bebe's kids compared to Robin (laughs) Harris stand up, bro. Just watch Robin Harris just stand up. Man, shout out to Martin. Greatest TV comedian 
of all time. I would give that yeah. to him because the show is easily. I don't even know how some people hate the show, don't even like the show, and put that. There's people who hate the show. They they think Martin is overrated. They probably no, didn't grow. They no. probably were too young to understand it at the time. Bro, as That's an adult, if you it doesn't even that, that. Trust me, as an adult now watching it, it of course you ain't gonna understand stuff while you're young. But man, it, you will love the Martin show even more as an adult boy. Because because it's it's so it's so relatable. You have like you know as a black man, you have like your friends, your black friends. We all got that one friend who we don't know where he worked. We don't think he got a job. He always got money, but we don't know where he works. This is a story of black love, and your girl got that homegirl that you hate. And just hate. <laughs> it, right. It's just such a relatable show, yeah. Bro, so, and then... So, and then oh, go ahead. Go. No, I didn't want to get this out before I forget it, but one, uh, man, I was just... I don't know who I was talking to. I, I say that my sister ever uh, dated... Uh, uh, NFL player or basketball player, NBA player, or whatever. And I said, we had access to the skybox. The only episode I really, really be thinking about is Martin Dog. Uh, he's like, Gina, I couldn't get to the skybox. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that skybox episode is probably top, man. It don't get talked about enough, bro, because when he didn't have access to it no more, dog. <laughs> he's like, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I'll tell, tell you, you, I'll tell you, uh, who gets slept on is the Wayne's family. I was just mm-hmm. about to say, man, mm-hmm. what they did with the Living Colors, mm-hmm. man, Living mm-hmm. Color changed the game. There will be no oh, Jim Carrey without it. Sketch comedy, yeah. And Jim Carrey, shout out Jim Carrey for saying that about this. Jamie Fox. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He bred a lot of talent for sure. Yeah, Damn, Keenan Ivy Wayne's Tuskegee. Straight oh, up. yeah, mm-hmm. um, definitely went to Tuskegee. I think my honorable mentions are Marlon Wayne, D Ray, Martin for show, Dion Cole, and James Fox. Dion Cole, yeah. Dion serious, Cole is bro. hilarious. He, he, he is, bro. Hilarious. and he, he's like the backbone writer for a lot of the stuff that we like. The whole Blackest series. He is the comedy writer for Blackest. Yo, they, they, I, wasn't he Not the writer? Uh, it's, it's cool. It's cool. You don't have to be. <laughs> the world is a fan, brother. Like, and then he then he write who wrote Cousin Skeeter? White Skeeter? fans. Who, was, who wrote Cousin Skeeter? Was it uh it wasn't him? It was Bill that was Bill Bellamy. But yeah. Bill Bellamy. Yeah, Bill Bellamy. But yeah, Dion Cole, I d I didn't know he was such a like humongous writer in the comedy game, but he puts out material, man. Yeah, man. It's, it's oh, so Paul many. Mooney, too. Yeah, it's a lot, man. Paul no, Mooney, yeah. boy. Rest in peace to John with a spoon. Yeah. Rest in peace to uh, Flip Wilson, but rest in peace to Red Fox. Man, it, it's so it's so many comedy giants, <laughs> and that's a whole nother thing, bro. That's why I say ain't nobody seeing um, Eddie Murphy when it comes to movies, because literally... One of his most underrated movies that I feel like folks don't talk about enough is Harlem Nights. Like, bruh, the simple fact that you put all those legends in that movie. Like, he he, he does that all the time, bruh. Like, putting folks on. That's why I feel like he's the GOAT in so many ways. They should know the Nutty Professor. That's what I'm saying. Like, bruh, just look at all the talent before before they were big. Charlie Murphy probably had a couple of lines in Harlem Nights, but folks didn't know Charlie was, was <laughs> going to be that big. Robin Harris was in that movie. Then you got your legends from uh, uh, Richard Pryor. Then you got Red Fox over here, man. I'm talking about, bro. It's like big time hitters. I'm talking about goats <laughs> in their own right, dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, man, this is so many. Yeah, movies. so. So my honorable mention real quick, um, woman, this woman uh, comedian that a lot of people talk about, Cheryl Underwood. Um, I like her. Mm-hmm. Um, Ricky Smiley, Chris Rock, and then uh, I like the young and DC Young Fly. Yeah. And the, the one thing, I, 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 
man, DC, DC. Shout out to DC, man. I, I really love DC. DC's starting to grow on me a little bit. I still think I have to see him uh, without <laughs> Carlos Miller and uh, Chico being. And I just want to see him just go. Mm-hmm. Because I know when it's all three of them, oh, oh boy, yeah. them. Oh, they are yeah. untouchable. <laughs> like, South, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, they are untouchable with that. I know Chico fine. I'm talking about all I seen all them boys like individually. I want to see DC just go. I feel like he's definitely talented. I just want to see him do it by himself. Mm-hmm. For one I don't see him doing stand up. I can't see. I don't or just don't do something. Well, that like they say, man, you're not a real comedian until you do you get up on that stage. Yeah, stage. All, all of them mm-hmm. say yeah. they, well, they, they do well, he does. If you, I went to 85 South Tour early, they used to um come out individually and do a small set, and then they'll do a group set after that. But you know, for me, DC Young Fly is funny, but his funny is different. His funny is like the funny from my high school. You know what I mean? Like he gives me that type of funny. That's that's what he reminds me. Just like a bunch of Jonin, uh, just a goofy, just a goofy dude. But like, what? as far as professional comedy, like the Eddie Murphys, the Dave Chappelle, the Delirious, the <laughs> yeah, nah. I, no, I mean, what I'm saying, man. Hey, no hey, 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 what about uh Patrice what? O'Neal? Patrice is definitely up there. I'm thank Jesus, God exactly. he's so funny. And, and let me tell you something, bro. I, I I should be slapped because when Patrice was alive, I wasn't listening to Patrice. It took Patrice to die, and I'm talking about years later. Like I'm 32 now. It took me till I was 28 to listen to Patrice O'Neill, uh, Elephant in the Room. And when I tell oh, you when man. I was done with that, I was like, bro, I was so sleep. And I went on YouTube, just listened to a bunch of Patrice stuff, and I was like, bro, where was I? Like, what was I doing? <laughs> he went under the radar, though. There's a lot of people like that. That's what I'm like, man, I mean, oh my God, bro. I'm, I'm so glad you said that, bro, because I'm just like, bro, Patrice O'Neill Patrice, is... Patrice O'Neill is one of the people who discovered um, Kevin Hart. Yep. And I remember, mm-hmm. uh, I think he was talking to Joe Rogan, dog. He said it was him. Bill Burr is one one of the oh, big. Oh, he is, he is, yeah. Boy, you talking he about uh, the, white dude? He, he under the Chappelle tree. Man, let me tell you something. That boy, Bill Burr, is with <laughs> gold, boy. I'm talking about he. I have yet to see a bad special from him. Yeah. He is a go for real. He's good. He's good. He's if, good. if he he's keep good. going on this tight run, he's going to be up there one day, man. Because he's he, definitely. He... My bad, brother. My no, bad. go ahead. Go ahead. I was about to say, he already up there, though. I think he's I'm, up I'm, there. I'm, uh, no, he's not up there with the Dave Chappelle's and Eddie Murphy. That, that's that's a different stratosphere, bro. Mm, he's not I up know. there. I don't know. Okay. I, if if Dave Chappelle was white, he'd be Bill Burr. <laughs> I'll put it like this. Okay, if you said if uh, that, would you, out of this top, out of the, all these names, would you take Bill Burr over any of these guys? Chris Rock, Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, Bernie Mac. Are you taking him over any of those though? Okay. Nope. Nope. I, Don't now, do that. I, mean, nope. I would I would I would take okay. You got Richard Pryor in there. And That's I'm a different strategy. I'm gonna be honest. Okay, Richard yeah. Pryor might have started some stuff, but uh they took what he had and they evolved it to something better. They took what he had. They evolved into something sir, better. Sir, sir, yeah. listen here. Listen here. That, that is highly disrespectful. You know, you know For what? one, I, 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 I I'm cutting you off on this. Bill because... Burr over Richard Pryor. I said it. Yeah. You didn't want it. I said it. I'm taking Bill Burr over Richard Pryor. I will look at every Bill Burr special before I look at every Richard Pryor special. Book it. That's Book a guy it. that never watched a Richard Pryor Book special. It. Nah, that's a guy who watched the Richard Pryor special oh, and realized no... that that form of comedy ain't that funny no more. It's Sir, not that funny. Your favorite, your favorite comedian will say he, that he is. That's if cool. Pe- that's cool. My if favorite pe- basketball player probably likes Elgin Baylor. But guess what? No, no, I no, like no, Kobe. No. <laughs> guess, guess what? Like, <laughs> the man Jesus said it best. I'm your favorite rapper's favorite rapper, 
And I'm also your favorite trapper's favorite trapper. Listen here, man. Every name mm -hmm. that I just named will say that Richard Pryor is the GOAT. It is no question about it. He you said Bill Burr. He no. created it. He created it. Oh, no, he did not. no, he did not create His style, it. His style of comedy is the same style that people have evolved over the years, the black people. Because his, his style of comedy went mainstream in that transformed comedy as we know it and that produced these people but as time went on guess what they it, they they perfected his style to what we have today and what we have today is a bill burr over richard pryor you need to you need i gotta love this guy out there. <laughs> you, you, you need to be need drug to tested burr, today that's that's josh don't even know who you're talking about that's, even, that's <laughs> the way i'm talking about josh don't know richard pryor I know Richard Pryor. But I don't, Richard I don't know Pryor. Give me one Richard Pryor. Pryor joke. Give me one Richard Pryor joke. Hey, it's been a minute. I, I, Bro, yeah, I know. Somebody, I know. somebody just give me one with the, the one where you, you give me give us a Bill Burr joke right fire. now. Right, right now? Right now? Okay. Bill Burr. Here we go. So uh <laughs> let me so let me tell you. Let me tell you. We have an old dog, right? We have an old dog, and I have my wife, and my dog's starting to die. He's starting to die. But you know what? I'm a man. I'm a real man. So you know what I do? I do what men do. I just suck it up. I look at my dog every day. My wife's in the bathroom crying just a little bit every night. <laughs> the dog's dying. Finally, we sell the dog. You, you, you remember this joke, right? When he was talking about how men hide their emotions over women. You remember this joke. I'm not going to do the whole bit. But I know Bill Burr jokes. He's a great comedian. Who is man? Stop it. Bro. Stop it. Because you just said you never seen a bad Bill Burr special. And you know that joke was funny. That's, you that's know the thing. That's, that's mm -hmm. the thing. Bill Burr doesn't have bad special. But guess what? Richard Pryor specials are legendary. Yeah. Folks still watch this. Because there was no one doing the specials like him. It was just him and Bill Cosby. That's it. Well, you need That's to learn it. your history. Bill Cosby is definitely a well, you know, we, we, we didn't learn your, you know, you know, your history Cosby. about comedy, man. This, this is no, no, no. I'm, then who, who else? Who, who else was George putting out? George Carlin. Richard... Okay. I think well, like Paul Wilson Moody was on the car with, is, with, with um, Richard Pryor this, a lot this, of times. This is what right? we about to do, bro. You know, you know who the two legends were going at. You know who the two legends were at the time. Bro, it's always top dogs and everything. It wasn't nobody That's why we talking about the top dog. Bro, no, we talking about if, top if, if, if we really being honest, it's literally mm -hmm. if we really just top top Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor are in a stratosphere by themselves, it's you literally Bill just Cosby them. Out. Bill Cosby is not on their level when it comes to stand up. Oh well, well just stand. Oh, you just doing stand up. I thought no, you were talking man. about comedians. Oh, no, man. But oh, no, man. no. Yeah. Bill Cosby I, is funny. Bill Cosby. Said I, bro. Anybody I am naming, you can literally look it up. Bill Cosby has said this: that Richard Pryor is the goat. Any, yeah, a stand up for sure. Yeah, but but it, Bill has some good stand up too, though, man. Yes, he has yeah, some good stand up, yeah, but some really good ones. He's very. You, if you if you ask anybody, I put it like this: if you ask anybody, what do you know Bill Cosby from? They will say, I know Bill Cosby from the Cosby Show. Yeah, that no. Think about our uh, generation. Bro. My grandparents, they talk a lot about Bill Cosby from back in And the they would say, we know him from the Cosby. And right. guess what? But that's what I'm trying to tell you, bro. It, it carries on throughout the generation. You do that, with a, lot. You can do that right. with a lot of guys. Yeah. Bro, Richard, Richard, Pryor is, Richard Pryor is the greatest stand-up comedian that ever lived. It won't be top. The only reason Eddie Murphy is not up there because he dropped the two. But you're not only saying two that legendary you're not stand -ups. Saying, I've you're not stand saying, you're not saying, yeah. bro. I don't want to hear your mouth right yeah. now because you you're said you, you said Bill Burr, Burr and Richard Pryor in the same sentence. That comedy, <laughs> that, that, comedy that comedy, that comedy, that comedy ain't funny anymore. But there are, other, anymore. there are other. What, what kind of comedy is that? Okay, what kind of comedy is Bro, that's comedy now. That that's not that funny. Like. Like, it, like, 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 gay comedy ain't that funny no more. Like, that's not funny. It's not funny. It's normal. It's not funny no more. Like, yeah, black is normal, but we still talk about it. What are you talking about, bro? Stop. You, you just pull, you just pull race no. out. Like, that's no, a no, no, no. That's a whole different no, topic. No, no. Wait, like, bro, 
Check this. You, you, saying, that, you saying that Richard Pryor only did gay comedy? That's what I'm no, saying. No, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying like that he had some funny bits on gay comedy and that's just not that funny anymore. Like, come on, bro. And we, we're going to really sit here and say the Richard, we're, we're going to say the Richard Pryor special is as funny today as it was back when it when it aired? Because you know it's not. I mean, it's guys, not. guys, have y'all seen Killing Me Softly by Dave Chappelle? His HBO yes. stand-up back in 2000? Yeah. Now tell me this, honestly, honestly, guys. Do y'all think Richard Pryor's Live on the Sunset Strip is funnier than Killing Me Softly? By far. I don't know. Live on the okay. Sunset Strip is probably one of the best stand-up uh, comedies of all time. I don't know, man. I've seen some funnier stand-up specials, bro, than Live yeah. on Sunset Show. Like, you can be, like, bro. Okay, I don't, even think live on, I don't even think so, Live on the Sunset Strip was better than Eddie Murphy's Raw. No, I think the Raw. But look what you're comparing it to. <laughs> look what you're comparing it to. But you just said the other guy is goat. You're talking about the goat. You're talking about Bro, the they, that Dave time. Chappelle special is not even Okay, you can say that Dave Chappelle special is right. one of his best ones, but guess what? You're comparing, you're comparing Raw. Raw is easily one of the best ones. Keyword, one. One, one, one of the best I, stand-up specials of all time. And look what and you're I comparing it to. to. Live on the Sunset Trip. I think Raw I is think, better. I think Raw was better than Live on the Sunset Trip. Yes, but look what Which you're is- comparing it to. But look what you're comparing it to. I said Raw is better. But look what you're comparing it to. You're comparing okay. it to one of the greatest comedy specials of all time. And That's Raw I'm saying. one of the greatest of all time, too. That's it what was. I'm saying. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Raw is one of the greatest so you, comedy. You, you, do you I'm put Killing Me Softly in that category with those two? Yeah, I so who you got? Funny. So do you think Eddie Murphy's over Richard funny. Pryor? That's I really the question. I think that's the best stand you put that's his best don't Pride. mean that doesn't mean that it's up there with them. That's mm-hmm. in a stratosphere. I'm asking you. I'm so is Eddie Murphy over Richard Pryor? Man, bro. I'm just I'm sorry. You gotta take the I'm fandom sorry. out of it, man. I'm like, trying to I mean, we you no, I think you take it, you're not taking the fandom out of it. You're a big Richard Pryor sure. fan. Some no, of us, I'm I'm a big Eddie Murphy like fan. I, I love Richard Pryor, but I, I know I know what's the what's real. I'll put it like this. If you walk up I think everybody on here has seen Eddie Murphy Raw, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Has everybody seen that Dave Chappelle special? Which one? Killing Me Softly. K- Killing Me Softly, yeah. Yeah, that's all. Right. Yeah. It's not too many people I know that will say that they've seen it or know which one that you're talking about. If you say you seen Eddie Murphy Raw, everybody's seen Delirious and Raw. Because there's only two of them. Two well, well, and, and, but but you gotta understand, time was different. Also, like we're living in an era where they they are bombarding us with like entertainment shows, comedy. They're bombarding us, bro. There's comedy on my on my phone, social media. There's comedy on Netflix. There's comedy on YouTube. There's comedy on HBO, Stars, HBO Max. Like it's not like back in the day when Ron Delirious came out. Comedy was in one place. One like comedy specials were in one place. That's different. That's different. So I can understand people saying, "Oh, I missed this one because there's so many to catch. There's so many to catch." But everybody doesn't deserve a special. That's what I'm saying. Everybody's not special. We do, we just got to go on here. Yeah, Dave Chappelle is cool. That's what I'm saying. But look who we talking. We talking about Dave Chappelle. I can tell you right now. We can name Richard Pryor stand up, but can we name we can we can all the days should pay. I I can't even tell you the name of the new one that he just done, but it was a good one. It wasn't it wasn't, it wasn't it wasn't like you just 30 years from now we'll be like, oh man, that was up there with Raw. The thing about Dave Chappelle is a lot of his stand-up com specials are like unplanned. Like he would just show yeah. up. And they like press record and yeah. just do a set, so they you, you wouldn't really know the names like that. Like they ain't promoted like that. Yeah, I get I what they're saying the, though. It's like yeah. in the arena, you got raw, delirious. Like they had promos. This is one of the only places you can get it. That was before Comic View and all these other mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that don't make it not funny. Like 
It's oh no, it's hilarious. hilarious. It's hilarious. Regardless, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. But hold on, <laughs> I, I, hold on. I'm about to really. And since you said that, so I'm, I'm not not. This ain't even aimed at you, Ted. Arlon, you said what he was doing was dated, right? With Who, the gay Richard jokes, Pryor? yeah. With your prior, with with yeah. the gay jokes, right? Yeah. What you consider Dave Chappelle doing? I don't think it's dated because he's talking about equal rights. Richard Pryor just talking about a guy being gay. Like, not not all the time. This is just me pulling out a joke. Like, a guy being feminine. I don't think that's funny. But, bruh. Most, it's, most it's, of it's, it's, it's kind of funny it, how, it's bruh. Like that, which was like kind of listen, funny, too. Yeah, yeah. But it's kind of funny how, like, we've been screaming and praying and fighting for equal rights. And then this other group who just comes up and says, oh, I think I'm a girl today. Gets an anti hate bill. That's kind of funny. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. It's kind of funny how we've been screaming about equal rights. Then some other people who are like, well, I think I like my same gender get an anti hate bill. We still went on a black hate bill. Bisexual, though. So, I mean, yeah, it, that's cool. It's, it's nothing wrong with that's it. I'm just saying, I don't think that's how. I don't think it's funny. Thing. I think it's dated comedy. It's dated. One thing I, I had to push back on is like, I think most of Richard Pryor's like comedy was about race and himself. It was some gay jokes in there, but he didn't that, get up there. That's what I'm saying. You did. Right, right. I'm not saying. I'm not saying the whole thing. Okay. I'm not saying Dave the whole thing. Dave Chappelle did a whole set on the trans community. <laughs> Who? Dave Chappelle did a whole, almost a whole show I'm on not, the trans community. I'm not. I'm not saying his whole this, show this revolved around. And then oh, say bad, that's bro. that's dated. Like you can't pick this one part and just say that's dated. And, yeah, and, and I like, think I think the way I think the way we were depicting race at okay, the way they were depicting race at that time, some of that's dated. Like some of that stuff's not happening anymore. It's not it's not as like funny what? to me. Some some things I have like, bro, there's there's no segregation. There's no segregation. Well, we're integrated now. That I don't have to fight for a seat on the bus. That that stuff's not happening right now. But what I'm saying is, if I was living in that time, that's hilarious, because this is these are like current events. Like things change. Comedy is built. True comedy has a lot of truth in it based on what's happening currently. And some of the things that were happening back then just aren't happening now, and it's just not as funny. Just not as funny. I'm not saying Richard Pryor isn't funny, but Everything from those specials aren't as funny as some of the special as a lot of the specials now. Because you said race, my fault. I didn't say race. I said segregation. That that was in nineteen eighty two when live yeah, was said coming. Yeah, out. but and yeah, but we still wasn't separate water fountains in nineteen eighty two. There there wasn't separate water fountains in nineteen eighty two, <laughs> but there was still a lot of Jim Crow going on in eighty two. That's true. Yeah. Is yeah, like, Crow going on? <laughs> You want to go to Mississippi? I've been there. I've been. I had my tennis team run out of Mississippi when I was that, a kid. And you don't I remember. Think it's, and no, you don't I'm think, not no, saying. I'm listen, not saying listen. there. I never said there was no race. I never said there was no racism. Yeah, no, no, I no. Said you that. said something like some. A lot of that race stuff. I said like, segregation. I said segregation. That, no, you 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 pointed out the part segregation out of. But you said race yeah, first. Some of, some of, yeah, some of the race things and some of the race th- and one of the race things I was talking about in particular is like the segregation and the Jim Crow laws. They they just weren't as prevalent. They're not as prevalent today. It's not so, as prevalent. Not saying it doesn't exist. It's just not as prevalent. Times have changed. So like, I it's get, just not I as funny it. to me. I get yeah, it. Like, that, that's but we're drawing people. we're drawing straws right now. With the, the part that I didn't agree with was the Bill Burr. Like, how did he get he, thrown? That in that, that is right. Like, that like, is highly disrespectful. We talking about Dave Chappelle, Dave Chappelle, Eddie Murphy, and Richard Pryor. We drawing straws, but I don't know because I think I think I think Bill's Burr. I think Bill Burr's comedy. Okay, for me, what makes something funny is delivery and truth. Delivery and truth. Like what's mm. going on now? What's relatable? That's why Martin is funny to me. It's relatable. Like that stuff is funny. Um, Bill Burr has moments that are very relatable, especially when he talks about like him and his wife. Now he doesn't really go on a color rant, but it's a woman. It's a woman. 
we go through the same issues, men and women. And I, I think, I think that's funny. I think it's funny watching white women. I think that's hilarious how they walk around and play victim all the time. I think that's hilarious. So his comedy style today, to me, how I like comedy, it's funny. It's funny. It's go to you can you can like my fault. Mm-hmm. I was just gonna say I think Rich had a lot of cocaine jokes that I just couldn't relate to. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know that back in the day, that's probably what you know. That was a thing. Hey, don't get it wrong. A lot of people out here in Atlanta do cocaine. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It was it's a Coca Cola. Just... <laughs> it was a part of Coca Cola. Uh, uh, so hold on. So you pick it. So you picking Bill Burr over uh, Richard Pryor too? No. I actually need to go look at more of his standups because I don't want to speak. I'm gonna watch some. I can't speak I mean, down because on this, bro. I'm I I I am telling you right now, online sounds so uninformed right now. I, I know, I know. I watch Richard Pryor. Richard, I just, man. I just don't think it's super funny. I'm That's not thinking no, nothing bro, bro. I can Richard listen Pryor, bro. here, bro. I can. I I'm not the biggest LeBron fan, but I know LeBron is one of the top. Uh, NBA players of all didn't, time didn't say Richard Pryor wasn't one of the go. But you, I didn't. But this didn't is what it. you did. This this is literally what you just did. I think he. Fun, li- I think you, Bill Burr funnier. You li- you I literally put funnier. Larry Bird over LeBron. That's literally nope, how you nope, just did nope, it. No, 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 no. We got, we got, we got, we got Wilt, and I just put Shaq over Wilt. No matter of fact, you just literally put Larry Bird in I, front of Michael Wilt, Jordan. I, nope, I, we got Wilt, and I put Shaq over Wilt. I got an old dude who used to dominate, and I put Shaq over. You, I put, put Shaq over Wilt. Shaq no, over Wilt. I wouldn't I even would put, put Bill Burr nowhere too. near these names that you are named. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's, a, it's, a, it's an anal- it's an it's an analogy. It's an I analogy. I know what you're trying to say, yeah. but that, no, it's not even close. It's not even that's close. What you, that's, 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 that's like what I'm talking about Shaq. what makes me. I'm I'm talking about what, what makes me laugh. I'm talking about so what, what makes me laugh. I got a question. What about what about Eddie Murphy? Where do you put Bill Bird? As it relates to uh like I think Eddie Murphy is funny. I think Eddie Murphy is funnier than Bill Burr. I think that I think that's funnier than Bill Burr, but I relate to that. I relate to that. Did you watch Eddie Murphy? In in real time. In real now, time. Now right. He had a lot of gay jokes. In yes, real time, Eddie Murphy <laughs> had a lot of gay jokes. Man. That's what I'm trying to real, say. But he, yeah. see, okay, how old? How old were we when, when Delirious came out? How old were we? We weren't even we born. Weren't even born. Tez was the only Who? one born. Sorry, Tez. Yeah, stop that. Man, Tez was the only one. Stop that. That's that's the second time, man. Stop. No, I'm sorry, bro. Man, Tez was the same age. No, he came out in like the '80s, dude. Let you me, and Ted are definitely not the same. I don't know. It, it came out in 87. When you hear old ski, that is old ski. So but like I said, 87. No, Raw, Raw probably came out like 82. I thought Raw came out like 90. 87? No, no. It was in the 80s. Raw came out like 84. I had, you had on VHS. VHS. Yes, because they converted it that way. Don't mean no, it came no, out. My, my came out in I was young. <laughs> but hold on, hold on. I was young. Before we get you said Delirious topic. came in at Delirious came out in 83. Raw came out in 87. Okay. Okay. I stand corrected. I watched that as a kid, and I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was the greatest thing I'd ever seen. Yes, but he said a lot of gay jokes. Ever. The same yeah, stuff that you kid, consider dating. If, if I heard it today for the first time, it may not be as funny. But I heard really? it in real time as a kid. I didn't hear Richard Pryor until I was older. I didn't. I watched Richard as a kid. It's, it's, it's bro, yeah. certain certain things ha- like I said, during the time period, the type of the type of like resignation it has with people as it's happening matters. Like if you show your if you show your daughter some of the stuff you watched as a kid, she might hate it. But the type of the type of exposure you got from it, watching it in real time, that that holds some type of weight and value in how you how you look at it. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Or am I tripping? 
You're tripping. Am I tripping? You're tripping. Nah, come on. Come on. And what, what, what you, what you, what you, what you said on. sounded sounded very Disney and very cool and all, but I'm Stop not listening it. to none of that. Stop bro. it. Stop man, it. Man, man, we about to push two thirty, and I know uh, a lot of guys got to go go home, but this guy's still at work. So shout right. out to you, man. First off, I just want Josh and Tess to know, anytime y'all want to come on the show, because I don't think folks understand, they just see us up here, and they just think, oh, man, it's just them talking. I, I'm making it very, very clear. Anybody can come on the show. That is the fun part. Just wait till it started to become live stream. <laughs> I think the Haven ain't going to control itself. <laughs> it's going to be an animal. It's going to be an animal. <laughs> just wait. I'm just telling you when it when it his live stream. I did, he's gonna I be, did good this week. I did oh no no, you did awesome this week. Come on, guys. Yeah, but no, but I'm just saying it's it's just it's just more fun when you literally got people typing in the chat than seeing you in real time. That's way way different than what we talking about. So and then folks that you already know know they're gonna be cracking jokes and all that. But man, wait. yeah. Appreciate you, brothers, for coming on this week, man. Like I said, anytime you want to come on, it doesn't matter, man. We That's literally the whole show. It just basically barbershop talk. What everybody talk about in the barbershop, just less cuss as possible. <laughs> we try not to, but, but of course, you can't put all these brothers in one room and ain't, ain't a few N-words and a few MFs come out. But you already know. As always, appreciate Arlon, The Haven. Uh, everybody just can shout out their uh, social media and all that good stuff and just tell the folks where they can find you on social media. If you got a business, like my dog Ted, shout it out. But we're going to start with the guest first. So, Ted, you go ahead. Yeah, Ted's Renfro. Proto IMG. Uh checking me out on Instagram. That's about it, man. Like he said, old skiggy. No, about tell it. about the best tailgate, man. When it comes to homecoming, man. <laughs> they, 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 I ain't gonna even let you get off like that, man. Okay. Go ahead and let them know where they need to be at. Yeah. So what y'all yeah, do? We, we 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 me and a couple of my friends, we tailgate kings. Tuskegee Tailgate Kings. Uh, we travel pretty much anywhere in driving distance um, to Tuskegee Games. Show up the big burgundy tent, uh, free everything, food, free alcohol. It's just a big party, man. Um, and this year, we doing some big things, man. We looking at that Grambling game, I'm trying to make oh, it happen. Man. So man, man. that's in in the boot. <laughs> so. Mm. Yeah, stay tuned for that. We'll be putting some stuff up, man, with the schedule and stuff. And um, yeah, everybody come out and kick it. Everybody come out and kick it. It's a vibe for sure. All the way in the back of Bremer parking lot, ladies and gentlemen. The best yeah. spot you want to be doing homecoming. The best yeah. spot. <laughs> yeah, so homecoming, we do uh, two day parties Friday, Saturday from 4 p.m. to 4 a.m. No yeah. stop. Wow. Uh, it is. You got to be there. You got to be there. <laughs> to understand that was literally what my homecoming nights consist of. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got videos up. If you follow me on Facebook, I'll, I do like the videos for it too. So I got videos where you can see like the crowd and how we how we uh, put it all together. Don't worry. I'm going to tag all that <laughs> in the uh, Facebook. And if you guys are not friends with them, don't worry. You'll be friends with them very, very soon. <laughs> Josh, go ahead, my brother. Let them. Let yeah, them man. Go. Yeah, man. I appreciate y'all, man. I absolutely enjoyed it. I've been dying to get on another podcast. Um, y'all can always find me on uh, Facebook, Joshua Dennis. Uh, Instagram, Joshua Dennis as well. I have a TikTok. I don't really be on it like that. Um, and just hashtag the biggest Falcon fan. Um, in the world, slash UGA fan, slash Hawk fan, slash Braves fan, biggest Georgia fan in the world, man. So well, at least we, really at least we, my fault. 
I did. I did I messed up. My I messed up your uh, outro, <laughs> but at least we agree on something. We Braves fan. Josh, you ah, have okay. an unnatural allegiance to losers, and it's so unlike. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, that's fine. Okay. Hey, I, I got bat to bat rings in 21 and 22 with UGA, yeah. and I got a ring with the Braves in 21. I'm good. And I got Atlanta United. I got a ring in 2018. Hey, didn't the, Spark, I think the Sparks got a ring one year, too, didn't they? You mean the Atlanta Dream? Nah, they done been to I the mean, finals. Oh, oh, my bad. My bad. Ooh, you know, boy, boy, my you bad. boy. <laughs> ooh, you about to lose your... Oh man! But, uh, yeah, I just... so since you, you go ahead and show in that hat, sir, you let them know where you, who hey, you Sean, are. Hold you know? oh, look, mm. hey man, uh, you already know where to find me at, man. It's your boy, <laughs> at DJ Ghost Plato on all social media platforms. You already know, man. Another one in the books. You know how we do this. Yeah, man, you can find me. Um, find me on IG, uh, ESG underscore AEA underscore DCS. Whole lot of frat shit, whole lot of drum line stuff, whole lot of band stuff. You know the vibes. Um, shoot, get a chance, check out a Bill Burr special. You won't be disappointed. And there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> you know, go Packers. There you go. Y'all already know, man. I'm the host of the show. I'm Mr. Brinsky Sharp with the Sharp Shooters Podcast. We drop every Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure y'all keep supporting, liking, comment, commenting, and subscribing. Once you subscribe, keep supporting. We on the road to 400. Just started in late August, and to be almost at 400 is a blessing. We're gonna hit a thousand before. I, I'm we're gonna hit a thousand before uh April for sure. And I may even push it up to March if everything mm-hmm. keep going to plan. But that's pushing it. But hey, we dreaming big dog over here. So y'all just keep on supporting us. Appreciate y'all. Hold on. Tess, what's one more, up? One more thing, um, Brinsky, I just wanted to tell you. I don't know if you saw it, but Ryan Williams canceled his Texas visit. Ooh. And yeah, oh no, yeah, that was one of the things I was talking about before. Hey man, cancel that Texas visit. Uh, he just had a ball at Alabama. Yeah, you can go ahead and put them down horns down because he just canceled it. It's all you don't want to go. You don't want to go. Don't bums no way. At, we don't need no way. Man. Everybody <laughs> don't want somebody when they don't come. There. <laughs> hook them, baby, hook them. Georgia hook just them. said the same thing about Caleb Downs. That's and then we don't need him. You got to like who like you, baby. Yeah, but you got to uh, like who like you. Appreciate everybody uh, supporting the show, uh, giving great feedback. Just know it's definitely – we definitely going live very soon. I said I was going to do it for the um, for the uh, SEC championship game. Not SEC championship game, but that week I was going to uh, do it. But it's coming up soon. I'm just trying to figure out – when it be a great time, could be All Star Weekend or something. But matter of fact, it could be Super Bowl Weekend. It, we probably push it like that. So that Tuesday night or that Wednesday night, we'll go live for that uh, show. And I don't know what. Hold on, this twenty one next week is the Pro Bowl episode twenty three. So that could be the Jordan one. It could be a sign. <laughs> so. As always, appreciate everybody. Keep liking, coming, subscribing. As always, we up out this thing. Roll tide, horns down. F Auburn. <laughs>